Welcome, bonjour, everybody, to stage three of the virtual Tour de France. Le Tour de France virtual. Last week we had two stages in Watopia, and now for the very first time, history is being made. We are on the virtual roads of France for stage three. I am very, very excited. There's the sunflowers, there's the general classification. Alongside me is Hannah Walker for today's ride. But this is going to be very, very special indeed. First up today are the women for stage three. We have the men just a little bit later on. And we have the RGV route today. But before we look at in a little bit more detail at the route, let's have a look at the general classification. Uh, Team Tipco Valley, they're leading the GC for the yellow jersey. They're also leading the general classification for the green points jersey as well. Just ahead of Canyon Shram and Drops. So a comfortable lead in two classifications. We should be moving on in a few seconds now to this is the polka dot jersey and that is being led by drops cycling at the moment and april tacy will be wearing that jersey in game april of course the winner a surprise winner of stage one of le tour de france virtual just running through the classification before we get to the action the white jersey classification is being led by trek segafredo they have 15 points just ahead of team tidco silicon valley as we just look at some of the beautiful views you're going to see today. It is absolutely wonderful. So uh, Hannah is just on the left-hand side there in my virtual screen. Lovely to see you, Hannah. I mean, we had a wonderful two opening stages of the virtual tour, but now we're in France. Both of you and I have ridden these routes. This is going to be an exciting race. Yeah, it certainly is, isn't it? And uh, yeah, we got a, a sneak preview yesterday. And um, yeah, it's actually very, very interesting. Unlike last week's uh, two stages where there's a lot of climbing, this week really does favour those sprinters or the very, very strong time trialists. So uh, it's going to be fast and furious. I've been keeping an eye on the, uh, the stats so far and the race hasn't dipped below 45 kilometers per hour. Um, it, it's constantly around 48, 49. So it just shows after only a few kilometers of racing how fast this stage really is. Yes, indeed. We are expecting a very, very high speed. As, as you said, the distance 48 kilometres today. The riders, or the first race, has been underway. They've got it about 11 k's done. We're just looking at some of the classifications here, just explaining the way that the classifications work. And it's not based on time at all. It's all on a points-based system. All of the classifications, the yellow, the green, the polka dot and the white jersey, are basically on a points system. There's 50 points for the first riders to cross the line. The top 25 riders score, one point for the 25th rider. And basically, the team that amasses the most points at the end of the stage will be the team that are in the yellow jersey. And of course, those points roll over from stage to stage to stage. And the most consistent team at the moment have been Team Tibco Valley. And the wearer of that jersey in games will be Kristen Falconer, the 27-year-old from the United States of America. We'll be going back to the game very, very shortly indeed. Out on the course, there are points towards the Prince classification as well, best known as the green jersey. And the all-important power-ups will be used in game as well. These are vital to get used to and can make the difference between winning and losing. We'll go into those in a bit more detail once we join all of the action. And there we go. Just run through the teams that we have here. We have Team Tibco Valley, of course, the best team at the moment. Canyon Shram with Tanya Erath, always active. CCC 2020, watch out for Chloe Digart, 10 times multiple world champion. And also April Tacy four drops. We've got FDJ, Sunweb, Trek Segafredo, Lotto Sudal. Watch out for Kopecki there from Poland. And then moving on, we have Arkea, Ale Ciappellini, featuring uh, Marta Bastianelli, the current Italian road race champion, and also Val Park Hotel, the Valkenberg, a team that are very, very active on Zwift. This is the course that the riders are facing today. Two laps of 24 kilometers with a sprint at 11.9, a small queen of the mountains at 13.8. That's a third category affair, only short, another sprint before they roll through, get the bell and do it all again. Uh, both uh, myself and Hannah have, have had the opportunity to ride on this course. It is very, very fast indeed. And unsurprisingly, we've got a very, very high average speed. 13 kilometers have been done already. And as we said, uh, Hannah, earlier on, this so far has been a very, very fast race indeed. But not that easy. I mean, it's, it's going to be almost like a time trial effort today. Just looking at some of the heart rates of the riders here, we've got 180, 170, 160 all day today. Because it's so flat, they're going to be at or around Hello. threshold. This isn't going to be easy at all. It's Radio Tour. La course est lancée, située sur le territoire français. Deux tours de circuit à parcourir pour une distance totale de 48 km. 16 équipes représentées. 
Hello and welcome on Race Radio 4 Stage 3 of the Ladies Virtual Tour de France. The race is currently underway, situated on the French territory. Two laps to be covered for a total distance of 48 kilometers, 16 teams represented. Well, thank you very much, uh, Sid Piquet, the voice of Radio Tour. This race is moving along exceptionally rapidly. This is the first KOM on the viaduct, the aqueduct. And who is it going to be? It looks like Hammers is going to take this one. Tacey up there, power up being used by both riders. The aero power up being used. It looks like Smeekel was up in the mix as well. That is the only climb out on this circuit. And that really has stretched them. Kristen Falkner not too far away. Clearly in attention there. Doesn't want anything to split here. But that first climb, Hannah, again, it will definitely hurt the legs because it is essentially flat all day. So any sort of elevation will really cause a little bit of pain. But that was only 400 metres at 5%. They should be back into their rhythm pretty quickly. Yeah, they should do. But as you said, you know, when you're going at high speeds and the gradient is going up, it still saps the legs. It really does take it out of you. And uh, those all important uh, Queen of the Mountain points on the line there at the uh, Aqueduct. It was a big uh, a tussle between drop cycling and Sarah Tizit WNT pro cycling and it did stretch it out as we just see now the uh, a few gaps opening up but it is the yellow jersey rider uh, Kristen Faulkner who's on the right side of that split and just look at how stretched it is in the back it really is stretched out here they really did lay down the power April Tacey scoring some valuable points there there she is 19 years of age from the United Kingdom top uh, branding there sponsorship with her headphones on I don't know if she'll be listening to music. She's more likely going to be listening to her director of sport team, Bob Varney, the team manager, the man behind this team. They are a very, very popular team. There we go. She's got a virtual, not a virtual, an IRL a swan year on hand there. And that's one of the important things, especially in this race today. This is going to be one of the longest stages of the entire virtual Tour de France. And at 48 kilometres, we expect it to be around about an hour. So fueling, especially hydration, Hannah, even more crucial than ever. Yeah, it certainly is. And you, you want to come into uh, you know, this indoor racing, the virtual racing, well hydrated. Um, and when the racing is on, you really do need to keep yourself, uh, you know, get the fluids in uh, as little as and often as, as possible, especially in these uh, these points when, you know, actually the action isn't uh, isn't on. It's not full gas. And um, yeah, if you can have some help uh, and assistance from the side there, from your, your Swanya from home, that's uh, yeah even better. But riders will be using things like uh, electrolytes uh, and energy drink to make sure those hydration levels are, are up. And um, maybe a couple of gels will see be popped as well as we get a f uh, the results there in the bottom left of that Queen of the Mountain map. Well, it was uh, April Tacey who took the lead there. So maximum points for her, adding to her current tally. So April Tacey clearly doing very, very well. I'm interested to see what the tactics of the drop cycling team will be because they are they're leading that classification. They've obviously got a stage win under their belt and they've got a little bit of work to do in relation to overhauling the team of Team Tico Silicon Valley. And there is our first real glance of the yellow jersey. And there is Kristen Faulkner giving her face a little bit of a wipe. But she's in the yellow jersey, sitting in the wheels a little bit. Lots of little ride-ons. If any of you are wondering what the little thumbs-ups are there on the screen, as we look at the stats on the bottom left-hand side, that's the watch that's being produced. That's the measure of power. The RPM is the revolutions per minute, so how many pedal revolutions a minute. So she's spinning quite a high cadence at the moment. Then we have heart rate at 166, and then the actual speed on the road, 43 k's an hour. So that's about the stats there. But anybody wondering about the ride-ons, um, Zwift as a platform isn't just an exercise platform, it's a community-based platform as well. It's uh, almost got inbuilt social media. And anywhere in the world, you can select a rider in-game and give them a ride on very much like a like on Twitter or Instagram. It really is an involving sport, isn't it, Annie? Yeah, it certainly is. It's, uh, you know, evolving all the time. And, you know, this is, you know, making history all the time. It, this is the first time um, we head to the, the French world. Um, but yeah, it, it's it got a real great community base to it, uh, you know, as well as the, the, the racing aspect and, uh, you know, lot, we've seen lots and lots of pros racing throughout the, the, the pandemic that's been, been going on around the world. Um, but the community as aspect is, is fantastic and, uh, yeah, using the companion app it is great if you, you can head over there. Give it a little uh, yellow ride on, See, um, give it to your favourite riders. So we get a, a little look at Nina Kessler, one of one of the most experienced uh, pros in this bunch today. She's been a pro since 2010. She's a strong sprinter, so uh, Tipco, you know, can, you've got a really strong team to be able to swap riders in and out into this roster. 
yeah, just a little bit, uh, a little bit of information about the roster. The teams have a squad that they have to uh, enrol, as it were, before the virtual Tour de France. But they basically can have four riders in the event. Uh, but uh, within the women's uh, virtual Tour de France, no rider can actually ride more than four events. So uh, they'll select the best events for the rider, also depending on resource. And also a lot can happen within the week. We've got another weekend of racing next week when we head to Mont Ventoux and ultimately the Champs-Élysées. But the teams confirm different riders. And when you look at the composition of the field here today, Hannah, OK, there are a few climbers, but when you look at the strengths of the sorts of riders that we have here today, it is riders who can deliver big power. Um, and that's what you're going to need today. It's all yeah. about delivering power, not, not, just at the, not just at the finish, um, but actually out on the route as we head towards the next sprint of the day. I was really caught out there. We're coming towards the next sprint. Lots of power has been used, but all the sprints and the, the Queen of the Mountains, very, very condensed here. Some power has been used. Hammers now, Latch, Alice Barnes, the first time we've seen uh, Christian Riffle is there too. But Latch looks like she's going to take the wins there from Barnes. Hammers in second place, so a good sprint there by the rider. That's from CCCB, uh, CCC Live. That Marta Latch, good win by her. We'll get confirmation of that in a, in a moment. But that's, it's really interesting. The way they've designed this course, Hannah, it's a very concentrated period of action. We've got the points, the, Q, the QOM, and then another point. So it's really going to be difficult to recover in between the efforts. Yeah, and I think that's just a you know, testament to the riders as well that you, you want to bring into your squad, you know, which riders can um, ultimately recover very, very quick. So this will suit, you know, riders like um, sprinters or even track riders, um, you know, if they've got a quick uh, recovery, you get a little look, uh, picture in picture of Marta Luck there, the Polish rider from CCC Live. Um, but yeah, it's all about recovery because it does come in quick succession. So, you know, only a couple of K ago, we were on the, the Queen of the Mountain, then we're straight into another sprint. Um, but now the riders do have a little bit of time to get uh, get recovery, get hydrated again, you know, take a, an energy gel if they need it. Um, and also just suss out who's in the group as well, which riders they need to be mindful of, which ones they need to be aware of. Um, we have, you know, lost a, a number of riders. It is whittling down, but we still have a big group, Matt. We certainly do, but it's just probably about ride 25 or so riders. But uh, if you want to add a little bit of depth to your viewing experience here, far up, uh, far up your phone or your laptop or your iPad or whatever, whatever device you're using and head to Zwift.com forward slash race view. And you can really mine through and have a little bit of a deeper look at the kind of metrics that are on offer. You can select a rider and look at what they're doing. I'm look, currently looking at Chloe Digard, so just to highlight that particular rider, look at her speed. You can see the speed, her cadence and the heart rate as well. And you can also see where the groups are on the route. And that will give you a nice little bit of depth in relation to what you're seeing on screen. So a nice addition is to head over to Zwift.com forward slash race view for a little bit more added action. And I must admit, I've got a few laptops open and that is one of mine. Give me an indication of where riders are. And as you said, Hannah, this is already split up. We've got 16 teams here, all fielding four riders. Uh, and already we have an elite group of riders here I'd say about 20 riders out in front. And I think today it's worth touching on the fact that today, although it's it's a, a course built for the more powerful rider, if you're a TT rider, this is going to suit you down to the ground because apart from those three, the three sprints midway through, it's a very linear sort of effort. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And, uh, you know, it really does, does suit them. It having that, you know, constant high pace. Um, as we touched on at the start, um, you know, the speed's, you know, weren't going much less than, than 45k an hour. We do have a little lull in in the action, but we're still, you know, at 38 kilometres per hour. Um, it's still, you know, a really fast pace. Um, so yeah, it does suit your your time trial. It's the likes of Chloe Digart, the uh, the current world individual time trial champion, road time trial champion. Um, so you know, we, we saw her miss out last week. You know, we, we predicted her to to win um, stage one. She she placed in the top five. But she still is here. A rider who I've heard is in very, very good form, Matt, is Krista Raphael from the, the Canyon Shram Racing Team. Um, she's actually got uh, Lars Teutenberg, the, the performance director of Canyon Shram, with her um, at her at her base. So she's got uh, some great help on help in hand there from Lars Teutenberg. There's a Lars Teutenberg, a man that I race against myself and know very well. Spent a little bit of time with the Canyon Shram team over the last few years on the Zwift Academy. Of course, a former Zwift Academy rider or winner, should I say, is winning. And right on cue, look at that. Fantastic. We have Krista Riffle, big fan going there and some support. You can just see the bike moving there, just uh, indicating the sort of effort she's having to put out. 347 watts. And she's just making sure she's not getting distanced. 
can just see a highlighted in the center of your screen there. We're just making the other riders invisible to give a little bit more of a highlight view of uh, Krista Riffle. At only 21 years of age and considered to be one of the big talents to come out of German cycling. She's been with Canyon Tram since uh, 2017, so a few years already. She was picked up in her first year as a senior rider. And there she is in the white jersey classification. So get on your companion apps and give Krista Riffle a ride on. And just looking on the right-hand side there, that's a few of the other riders in this group. As we look at the overall classification for the green jersey, the Mayo Vert. That's the points. And Canyon Tram racing comfortably in the lead at the moment in that classification with 127 with Tipco Silicon Valley in second position. So Tipco Silicon Valley now have lost the lead in that classification. But I'm wondering, Hannah, what the focus is going to be as we head towards, as we get towards the midway point of the first ever Tour de France, what the tactics of the teams are going to be. We had a little bit of a discussion before the start. The teams that are a long way behind in the GC, maybe we'll focus on stages. And maybe a team with multiple jerseys is just going to focus on winning one. Because actually to try and dominate everything, you risk losing all. Yeah, you do. And it's just like in, in the real life racing, isn't it? If you try and concentrate on too many things, actually, you, you know, you, your strength and depth uh, withers down and, and you're not able to, to succeed. Um, but, you know, we, you, when you look at the, the team of Tipco, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, they're, they're leading the team overall. They've got the yellow jersey, they've got the, the, the green jersey. Um, and, you know, is it possible for them to, to take it all and try and take stage wins? I mean, they were very, very uh, good last week on stage two. They took the stage win and they had riders up there taking. It's all, it's all about the consistency as well, trying to pick up as many um, points uh, as possible. Um, but, yeah, maybe for, for the teams like, like Canyon Shram Racing, um, they're currently sitting third overall in the team classification. Um, and, you know, you know, would they want to try and uh, maybe not go for the stage win, but try and pick up, you know, as many podium places maybe second and, and fourth and fifth uh, just to try and get the the numbers on the board yeah, it is uh, tactics so so important we saw earlier on uh april tacy with the headphones on look at that I, I, I just queued that up look at that the average watts so far for that's for the sprints for the intermediate sprint that uh, that tacy was was vying for maximum watts of 623 which is very very impressive considering this is going to be about an hour of racing so following that, you're going to have to dig deep into your reserves and go again just to try and get back in the slipstream. Um, doing sprints, either on intermediate sprints or queen of the mountain classifications during a race is, isn't, it isn't just easy. It's not as if you just sit in, is it, uh, is it, Hannah? Because if you make a big effort like that, the risk is if you go too deep, you grind to a halt. So you've got to make sure you've just got a little bit in reserve to make sure you sit back in the wheels again and don't get spat straight out of the back. Yeah, it's all about sort of knowing what kind of effort you can do and how you know quickly you can recover, um, and you know also knowing the course that the riders have been given an opportunity this week to have a recon of this course, so um, you know they can look at the, the pinch points and where it is hard, where they are able to save as much energy as possible. Um, but it's worth noting we spoke about hydration uh, just just earlier, but actually it's also about keeping your core body temperature um, da as cool as possible as well. So you'll see um, on the the, the live streams of the riders they'll have fans in front of them so trying to um, cool themselves down because when you are racing indoor and virtually you know your, your body temperature really does soar um, and it then it starts to affect your your abilities um, and, and performance as well so it's, it's many factors um, and knowing you know virtual racing as well uh, many factors can, can affect that performance and ability certainly is the case and the more that you race on Zwift the more uh, suited to it you become well not so much suited but used to the nuance and just while the, the speed has just dropped off a little bit we're going to be heading through in through the finish line again this is a series of kind of s bends this is the uh, flamme rouge the one kilometer to go we still have just over well, just under 24 kilometers to go of this race we had a little bit of a run into the circuit of around a kilometer of neutralized as it were before we actually went on to the circuit proper but the race distance itself, 48 k's. And this will be the first glance that the riders have got to see of this finish. Now, interestingly, both you and I, Hannah, did the recon. And I'd imagine lots of these riders have done a recon as well. But the actual finishing line, or the banner, the gantry, doesn't come in sight till about 150 meters to go. So essentially, they're racing blind. So this is the first opportunity for any riders who haven't done a recon to get a really good look at this finish. Because it's easy to be thrown. Just gone through the, uh, the 500 meters to go just under this little bit of a bridge and then we'll be turning right 
and then the finish line will open up. So uh, this is very, very crucial in, rela in relation to where your positioning is, because from that final turn, it is only about 150 metres to go. Yeah, it's very deceptive, isn't it? It's quite easy to see, you, you know, the, the bridge that you go under and then start to see all the uh, the finish um, livery and kind of go early. But it's from this point here where you start to bear to the right, where actually you only get your first sight of the finish line. Um, but you actually probably want to be starting your, your sprint to the finish just a little bit before then um, to try and really maximise, uh, you, you know, your power and, and your lead over um, your opponent's um, but those riders who haven't done the recon, you know, they are at a little bit of a disadvantage, but they do get one opportunity now to see that finish straight. Um, they do also get another opportunity now, as you can see a few uh, uh, power-ups being used to get another power-up uh, to, to be able to use. So as you can see there, a few draft uh, and the featherweight power-ups. Power-ups, of course, are absolutely crucial. We saw them at the top. We've just been talking through the racing and the way the points are distributed in relation to the overall classification and the other intermediate classifications. But power up such an important part of racing on the Zwift platform. It does take a little bit of use, getting used to, but if you use them at the right time, timing of the power ups is crucial. Getting the right power ups is rather random. Once you go through a, uh, a Queen of the Mountains uh, uh, arch, the finish banner or a sprint arch, you get given or assigned a random power up. And then it's up to you when you use it in game. As we look at uh, Tanya Erath, uh, a rider who's uh, no stranger at all to Zwift. She's done many, many races in the past. And she's very powerful indeed. She was drafted on to the periphery of the German Olympic team pursuit, uh, pursuit squad. She's very, very fast at the finish and was finished in the top 10. Actually, Canyon Schramm finished three riders in the top 10 on the opening stage of the virtual Tour de France. And she will definitely be one of the riders to watch at the finish, but looking comfortable. But it's worth, as we head into lap number two, I think, Hannah, explain to us briefly uh the power-ups because they're crucial aren't they yeah they really are and you know they, they act in a way of um you know a substitute of the variables that you would find in real life racing so we, we've got a number of uh, power-ups we've got the the lightweight feather which reduces your weight by 9.5 kil uh, kilograms that's only for 15 seconds we have the draft boost which is a little van icon uh, that increases the draft effect you're experiencing for uh, by 50 percent for 30 seconds um, aero boost, which is the little aero helmet one, makes you more aerodynamic and reduces your CDA by 25%. And that lasts for 15 seconds. So this is the one that riders will want for the finish, I would assume, today. And that's, that would be my favourite to go for. We also have the burrito, which makes you undraftable for 10 seconds. Uh, and invisibility, which is the ghost one, uh, power up, uh, that makes you invisible to other riders for 10 seconds. Now, the last two, they're event only. So if you haven't raced on Zwift before, you might never have experienced, you won't ever have experienced those two power ups. Um, so it really just show that, you know, the, the benefits um, to racing on Zwift and uh, getting a feel and, and getting some experience under your belt. Um, which power up riders get? just uh, to, to add is random however you can't choose which one uh, you get as you go through a uh, one of the banners it's completely random and uh, you might not find that you get the one that you are wanting well there we go that is a, a little bit of a chat about the power ups as you look at lily williams from a rally racing another team riding exceptionally well so far They've got a good squad with them. Megan Jastrab, she's only 18 years of age. I think she's still in this group. She is the current US road champion and world junior road champion. Sarah Bergen, Lily Williams, and Alison Beveridge. That is the rally lineup. Looking very, very well, looking very good at the moment. Now, the riders, as we talked about before, have had the opportunity to ride on this particular circuit. Uh, there's a couple of secret rides midweek, so riders get the opportunity to drop in and have a little look at the world. I think most riders have taken that opportunity, but importantly, you can ride here as well. You can ride the Le Tap de Tour virtual as well. So today, if you log in to Zwift using your companion app or via the website, go to zwift.com forward slash events, you can actually ride the virtual etap and you can ride on these very roads. So each day that we get a race, a new world is uh, unleashed. And this is the first time ever of course, we have we have had a French world, and I can tell you, it is great. As we look at all of the riders, look at that picture in picture of all of the field, or pretty much all of the field here, in their various caves, some indoors with a fan, some out on the patio, some in the back garden, and setups absolutely crucial. Some very, very interesting setups we have. 
as we move back to this elite group of riders. April Tacey moving to the front now. And I think, Hannah, with 20Ks to go now, riders are going to be thinking about what their tactics are going to be. Teams are going to be constantly communicating with each other to make sure everybody's there. Or if things haven't gone according to plan, what they're going to do next. What, so that each team has to be dynamic in relation to their decision making process out on the road. Yeah, it's just like in real life racing, isn't it? The the sports directors are able to communicate with the riders. They can get an in-race view of them as well. So to, to give them tactics, to give them feedbacks. All teams will have gone in with a, a game plan of what they want to what they want to do, what they want to focus on. But of course, you know, things do change on the road. Um, so riders might be using things like uh, Discord or WhatsApp um, with with their, with their group of riders that they um, with their team to sort of go through the tactics. And if you have, uh, you know, maybe you know, not been as successful or you've been dropped, it's also kind of giving a, a bit of feedback to the other riders to let them know that, you, you know, you are in difficulty. Um, you know, you're not able to maybe fulfill your job um, of what was set out prior to the race. Um, but it's really important to have that communication with each other um, and to even sort of see, look at look at what you need to, if you, what points you need to pick up on the road into the last lap as well. Obviously, we have two more sprints and one more uh, queen of the mountain, and then there's points on the finish line which are vital. Oh, they certainly are. Points on the line for the finish line for the general classification. 50 points for the win, so a big boost for the winner. And there are points on the finish line for the sprints classification as well, as you, as you get in that real life. And we should be getting our first interview very shortly. I believe we may be going to April Tacey. And there she is in the polka dot jersey. So we should be having a chat with her very, very shortly. And there she is. She's looking very comfortable at the moment. 150 watts or there or thereabouts is something she'll be coping with pretty well. Sat in the middle of the pack. She will have the benefit of the slipstream. Now in game, just as there is in real life, there is the benefit of slipstream. So it isn't quite as hard uh, as riding on the front when you sat on somebody's wheel. Uh, they are saving around 20 to 30 percent of their energy and actually the game designers the engineers have actually tweaked with the algorithm within the game of swift specifically for this tour de france to make it a little bit more like riding in real life in relation to slipstreaming and here's the interview with uh, april coming right up just yet but there she is moving to the front of the bunch right on cue looking good in that polka dot jersey winning the first is. stage of the women's virtual tour de france has been amazing especially as this year it is my first year racing at uci level with team drops at 19 years old this is the biggest win of my career so far and it has given me a lot of confidence going into the road season this year it's been great that women cycling get equal TV time and equal stages as the men and this will hopefully improve women cycling. The fans have been really positive and it's been quite overwhelming reading all your lovely kind messages. I'd just like to say thank you. Coming to, into the races this weekend I will be racing stage 3 and 4 and I'm most looking forward to stage 3 as it's a flat stage and hopefully it will finish in a sprint. There we go. April Tacey, just uh, describing how important it is for her to have got that win the other day and also for women's cycling. Again, complete and utter parity here. It is one of, uh, it's one of the most important messages that's been sent out over the last couple of years in, in relation to racing on the tour, so the tour de France. So we have the same stage distances and basically the same everything. In fact, the women are up first on every occasion. But really good to see April Tacey, a star for the future and a star of today, in fact. That was one of the biggest results for a team drops, that stage win. And she's in the yellow jersey and deep into lap number two of stage three of the virtual Tour de France. Things have settled down a little bit, haven't they, Hannah? But this is really going to be a calm before a storm. As we look out to the left-hand side, that's a, a virtual rendition of uh, Mont Saint-Michel, or shall I say inspired by a, a Mont Saint-Michel up in Brittany. This world that we've got on Swift here, the Route Grand Vitesse, RGV route, is essentially bringing together all of the key, beautiful, cultural, uh, topographical um, component parts of what is good about France. What we're used to, of course, normally the Tour de France would be, there'd be about, I don't know, stage 10 or 11 of the Tour de France would be going on right now. So for the first time, we've got the virtual Tour de France bringing together everything that is special about France. And that was uh, something along the lines of Mont Saint-Michel. And there we go, another superstar of the sport there, Hannah, Chloe Digart. 
yeah, one of the uh, most powerful and, and uh, yeah, fantastic riders of recent, she won back-to-back uh, -back junior world titles in Richmond in 2015, and since then, yeah, she hasn't stopped. Broke uh, the individual pursuit record, world record in Berlin uh, back in February. A uh, yeah, fantastic time trialist, individual pursuiter, and you yeah, know, also in in road racing, just extremely strong, real burly rider. She'll be uh, one to, to watch out for for uh, Team 2020 today. I know uh, very experienced on Zwift as well, Matt. Yeah, she certainly is. She's won a couple of races uh, on Zwift. I think I think you might have commentated alongside me, actually, Hannah. She won on the Richmond course in one of the Zwift Classics uh, maybe a year or so ago, emulating her win as a junior in the World Road Championships. Well, I was actually speaking to Chloe Digart the, uh, the other day and she was actually quite disappointed about her top five place. She said that uh, all credit to the, the girls that finished in front of her. Of course, April Tacey took the win there, but it's all about timing. And she might be the most powerful rider on paper, but getting a sprint uh, right on Zwift, just as it is in real life, it isn't just about who's got the most absolute power. It's all about timing. Obviously, the use of power-ups is that little additional factor that makes things so exciting, so unpredictable. But as in real life, Hannah, timing of a sprint is absolutely crucial, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's you know, the timing, but also the patience as well, isn't it? It's, you know, it, no matter how much power you've got, or speed or strength, if you go too early, um, you know, at some point the legs will run out. Um, and, and kind of that's what we saw last week, you know, April Tacey, you know, uh, powering over everyone um, and just timing hers to perfection. You know, uh, Dagot did go a little bit early, but I do think after that disappointment and having that bit between her teeth now, um, you know, she will want revenge today. Um, she does look very comfortable. Uh, what we, we saw her just then in the, uh, the live picture, she looks very comfortable, very, uh, yeah, happy with the way the race is going, sitting comfortably in the bunch and... Um, yeah, kind of no showing so far in in the sprints or the Queen of the Mountains, but you know perhaps saving it all for the finish. I think when you look at the uh, the general classification in relation to the yellow jersey, of course the coveted Mayo Jean for the first time featured in game on Zwift. It is very very special. So each stage, history is being made. Uh, but when you look at the general classification, maybe Team 2020 are looking towards individual stage wins rather than getting anybody up there in the yellow jersey because they are quite a way behind in terms of scoring points. And I think we're going to see that uh, those decisions evolve. But for me, Chloe Digart, this sort of course, it's going to suit her down to the ground, sitting in the wheels, conserving as much energy as she can. But she is one of, the, one of those few riders that uh, could afford to leave it to a sprint. But because of the power that she can put out, she could be one of those few riders that could actually go long and hold hold them off to the finish. So although it's looking like this could be a bunch sprint, and that's what we expect, there is still the opportunity for somebody to maybe drop a power up at the right time, maybe drop a burrito, a van power up, a draft power up and, and go for it long and hold on. Yeah, it could. Or even if you had the, the ghost power up, really um, you know, put in a big effort, uh, drop the, the invisibility power up, and, and no one will actually see they've attacked for um, the, the 10 seconds, it means they can get a really good gap on the bunch. And before the, you know, the, the bunch have got time to react, they really do have you know, a, a big lead. And then teams might start looking at each other, thinking, well, you know, I'm not going to chase. I don't need to chase uh, this rider and sort of leave it up to the other teams. And once you get that... Uh, the, the, the a slight delay in, in the peloton before they start to chase before you know it you know the, the rider out front has a, you know a lead of 15 20 seconds um and, and the likes of chloe that you know very very capable of doing that indeed but it's one of her teammates and that's uh, jasmine jasmine during from canada 28 years of age a very very good rider indeed the former pan american games champion back in 2015 been up there in the national championships uh, had a good season last year as well third overall in the tour of the Gila, one of the toughest uh, courses out there and um, that indicates to me she's actually very good uphill as well so which is uh, comfortably sat in that group at the moment you can just look at the names there erath moved to the front just on the right hand side you can just see the list that's the top 10 riders rotating through so that's in real time no gaps between them at the moment but there's only about 20, 25 riders maximum. I'd say 20 riders in that front group. Just trying to look through at the moment. We actually have around 25 riders in that group. Most of the key riders are still in there. 
Everybody just taking their time, sitting in the wheels. And remember, we still have that little cluster of intermediate classifications as we just passed through the beautiful sunflowers here. This really is something spe quite special. Uh, how did you, just before we head to the, uh, the Queen of the Mountains and the sprints, how did you in enjoy your virtual ride, Hannah? I actually think it's becoming one of my new favourite worlds. Um, Watopia is my favourite just because of how, um, you know, you, you're going underwater and you can get, ride through the volcano and you can see, you know, uh, the huge giant squirrel. Um, however, when I rode this, you know, there is so many similarities to the likes of uh, Brittany and, and, you know, seeing the likes of uh, Mont Saint-Michel and, and the aqueduct. I think it's... It's got a really nice feel to it. And I think as well, when you're riding along and you'll hear in the background noise, it, it sounds we like you're at the Tour de Hannah. France. It does indeed. Sorry to cut across you, Hannah. We've got a sprint coming up through on the cobbles. This is the Pave sprint. Who is going to take this? Look, Hansen from Riffle and Barnes. Oh, sorry to cut across you there, Hammer. Re reminiscing, waxing lyrical about this beautiful course that we have here in virtual France. But it was Hansen. We'll get confirmation of that very, very shortly. But this sprint known as the Pave sprint, as you can see, it looks like we are heading through uh, and uh, well, a real a real life village and every single piece of uh, that you see rendered in game here is inspired by rural France. It is something quite special. And uh, no wonder you run out on a limb there describing it. It really is quite special. It's, it's actually quite hard to push on the pedal because you're marveling at everything around you, aren't you? The, de the attention to detail in this world is really something uh, quite special. As we look at Loretta Hansen, Patrick Segafredo out of the saddle. She's still in that group. Here's the Australian focused on the screen in front, focused on her metrics. And this is the strange, one of the strange factors, I think, for me about riding virtual on Zwift is you can see some of the metrics of the riders, but you can't actually see them physically around you, can you? You're very used to, to gauging how a rider is, but because you can read the body language, their facial expression, the way they pedal a bike. But here, it's just based on maybe their positioning in the group and looking at, uh, at their stats. And there is the, uh, the slow-mo. As we just look at the uh, the wonderful windmill just set back as well. Multiple angles there. A couple of uh, power-ups were used. Not many power-ups for that particular sprint. And we will get confirmation. Points towards the green jersey classification were on offer there for the first 10 riders across the line. So lots of points on offer for the, the green jersey classification out on the road today. In fact, there's 50 points. Two sprints, and there we go. The Pave sprint taken by Hansen. And then Riffle in at second place. Alice Barnes, the British road champion for Canyon Shramp. So maximum points for the rider from Trek, uh, Trek Siegfrieder there. Hansen takes the win. Uh, and that's why I think she was actually, we saw her picture in picture making that effort just to, re just to regain the group because it's now quite a, sh a small group, Hannah. Not as much room to slide now, is there? No, there's not. We've got around 17 riders left in this front group now. So it really has whittled down from the original 62 riders that took to the start. Um, but, you know, sometimes when, when you've made that effort uh, and... I, as you were just touching on just previously in the in real life you know you can get that sense of uh, you know you're in your peripheral vision you can see riders see how they're feeling as we are going into the second queen of the mountain here riffle up towards the front hammers up there for uh, sarah tiz at wnt pro cycling they're currently second overall in the standings start to be uh, dragged out it is hammers who's leading this one out from uh, finja schmeckel of the drops team it does look like Hamas is going to be able to take this as a clear winner of this second queen of the mountain ahead of Schmeichel and Kristen Faulkner. Well, that was a good a good ride there by Hamas. She dominated that one. No need for a photo finish. And that has actually split this group. I think Faulkner, I don't know whether she was necessarily going for the points, just making sure she didn't miss a split because this reduced group of riders now, a couple of riders have been distanced now. The, the first 25 riders now spread over five seconds going through the Aqueduct Queen of the Mountains. That is the last categorized Queen of the Mountains climb of the day. And somebody using, well, this is uh, Hamnes now. She was the rider that took the points there. The German from the Sarah Tizit, a WNT pro cycling team, a team that Hannah, you know very, very well indeed. And this has actually split the group. We've got a little group of riders now moving clear. We've got this slight descent, hardly even discernible because the gradient of the climb was only around 4%, but it looks like Hammer's now continuing over the top. Or is she waiting? Well, the watch suggests to me she's actually waiting. Probably a good move here, but a good effort there to score maximum points in the yellow jersey, ever attentive. So good riding by Kristen Falcon and making sure she didn't let anything go clear. And it was Hamnes from Smeekel from Faulkner taking the final Queen of the Mountains climb of the day. We have one more intermediate sprint, which comes very shortly, shortly, and then the battle for the line. 
Yeah, that kind of climb really suits Hammers down to the ground. It's not too steep, but it's a real, you know, punchy uh, climb that she can, you know, you go go quite early on. That she did uh, split the field there. Hammers, uh, a winner of the uh, Lotto Turing and Ladies Tour last year, she won the uh, overall classification. She knows that uh, after last week's showing with Erica McNaldi picking up points in the Queen of the Mountains that she had to try and score today. So it'll be interesting to see how that has fared because Drop's still scoring in that second Queen of the Mountain. Drop's doing well. Back to uh, Krista Riffle, the 21-year-old German for Canyon Shram. You just see the amount of effort she's having to put through the bike there. Constantly being urged on by the colleague there. And a very professional setup. Nice Canyon Shram at a backdrop. Again, the, the Tour Virtual, such an important part of uh, the team engaging with the fans. An exceptionally important platform for their sponsors, of course, in the absence of racing in real life. But I think um, the success so far of this Virtual Tour de France, hopefully we'll get something in the future. Again, there is the, the classification for the Queen of the Mountain still being held by drops, 26 points to the good ahead of Ceratizit, WNT. Maximum points on the last climb wasn't enough to claw back the lead, but it was only a third category climb. So Drops will go into stage four, still leading that classification. So good riding by Drops. But now, what are they going to do towards the finish? Because Tacey is in the Queen of the Mountains classification. But given the kick that she's got at the end, you cannot rule her out for a second stage win here. And that would be something very, very special. 40 kilometers under the wheels, Hannah. 8.9 k's to go. But we've still got another intermediate sprint. We've got the Ballon Sprint with uh, around, it's around six kilometers to go. So a very, very tough finish here. So you've really got to sort of know what your tactic is. So you cannot afford to spend, to spend your pennies too early as we look at uh, Lily Williams here. And again, this group reduced down now to, I think it's 25 riders in this front group. Yeah, you certainly can't as we start going towards the uh, the ballon sprint. As you start to wind round the uh, the sunflower fields and the vineyards here, you can actually see the sprint up ahead. But again, it's all about the timing and patience. Although you can see the, uh, the sprint banner ahead of you, not to go too early. Try and time it to perfection. And this will be the last opportunity for riders um, if you haven't already done so, uh, got so the, the, the power up that they're looking for, this will be one of the last opportunities to, to pick up one of those power ups for the finish. As you can see, it's Great actually gone a little bit cagey now, Matt. That it, you know, all the riders trying to uh, stay within the peloton, recover a little bit, see uh, where their uh, opponents are at, try and uh, hydrate themselves and cool down. Yeah, definitely, an opportunity to try and recuperate and recover. And to make sure that you can cover off all the potential opportunities. This, they're turning right tomorrow at that junction. The riders will turn left and add a climb in. But today we're keeping essentially on a, a very, very flat route indeed. Hardly any elevation at all. Actually, 266 metres of elevation on today's course over the, the, the two laps. And we should be getting an interview very, very shortly. But there's the yellow jersey just moving back towards the front. Kristen Falconer. The American riding for team at Tibco Silicon Valley Bank has ridden an exceptional race so far. She's ridden really within the spirit of the Mayo Jean. It really does give riders that extra few percentage points or in terms of their effort. They're really riding with honor and they've gone for the full yellow socks as well. I've no doubt she might be screen grabbing that and, uh, and creating some sort of poster because uh, although it's in the virtual world, still wearing the Mayo Jean, Hannah, very, very special indeed. Yeah, it's very special. And, you know, it's the, the first uh, virtual uh, Tour de France on Zwift, but it's also, you know, the, the first women's Tour de France. I mean, you know, equal coverage, equal distance to the men. Um, and it really is a, a true honour for these teams and the riders. Um, and it's very special to also be representing your team on live coverage as well, Matt. Indeed. Well, here we go. It uh, looks like a ghost power-up has been used by one of the riders from Drops there. Alice Barnes is on the front at the moment. Well, she's been overtaken by Lack again. Lack, well, Marcus goes through. It looks like Marcus, two riders from CCC live there. So Lack takes the points from Marcus. So CCC live moving up in the classification for the green jersey. The first two riders there. Krista Riffle now rolls to the front, easing off. You can just see her watts per kilogram suggesting that after that effort riders are trying now to just recuperate a little bit but generally speaking it's textbook now we've got a little bit of a lull after the effort for the final intermediate sprint of the day but that does provide the opportunity for somebody who's brave and willing to take a risk to go over the top as we look at marcus good move there and now drops towards the back of the group 
But this is it now, Hannah. 6.4 kilometres to go. There is a little bit, to coin a French phrase, a bit of an entente cordial now within this group. Riders potentially looking at each other, looking at the watts and the stats. It has dropped down a little bit, although they're still cruising along at around 42 kilometres an hour as we head towards the finish. Who's your favourite out of this group? It's uh, difficult to tell, but I think uh, Diagot's still up there. You know, she's got to be one of the one of the favourites, and she can try and time that sprint to perfection today. Um, but you know, really, we can't even rule out Tacey, um, a winner uh, from stage one, a fast sprint, and she's got so much confidence to take into stage three today. Just to caught a glimpse actually of Megan Jastrab as well, the uh, junior road world champion, world champion in the Madison and Omnium as well. So. Uh, be interesting to see what she can do for the rally team. We've been hearing that they've brought in uh, Holden Komu to the team, to uh, who's a very experienced Swifter, to give some tactics to the riders and uh, to help them out for this virtual Tour de France. Yeah, Holden Komu, we know, is, as you said correctly, a good bit of information there. Here's the current American Zwift uh, champion. So his insight will provide value, very, very valuable tactical assistance as we look again at Tanya Erath around to just over 200 watts. She looks very, very comfortable there. I wonder if she looks like she's mouthing something there. She's obviously got her headphones on, perhaps talking to her teammates because we know we've got Alice Barnes in the front group, the British champion. I think uh, Canyon Tram, in terms of numbers in the front group, are looking very, very good. They've got Tanya Erath, Alice Barnes and Krista Riffle all in the front group. I haven't seen Rotem Gafinovich from Israel, but they are one of the few teams with good number. And there is Tanya Erath rolling through. Tacey is there again. Matheson, just looking through some of the other key sprinters. Chloe Diger, as you mentioned earlier on. Jasmine During is there. Pauline Allen. And we have, as I said, around 25 riders in this front group, but nobody wanting to go early. And there is the green jersey classification. The last sprint is done, although there will be points awarded on the line for the first 10 riders. But Canyon Shram, regardless of what happens in that sprint, they will go into stage four with the green jersey on their shoulders. So good work there by Canyon Shram. But with three riders up in front, Hannah, they're looking good to score some a, a really nice amount of points today. Yeah, they're looking good to score, you know, even more points uh, for the green jersey on the finish line, but as well as taking as many uh, points for the yellow jersey as well. That's uh, also exactly. going to push them up into the, the, the team overall. See uh, Kristen Faulkner, the rider in uh, vision right now, who uh, has the yellow jersey on her shoulders. They'll be looking to try and defend the jersey today. But um, I think, you know, we're we seeing Tanya Erath uh, on screen earlier. She's obviously communicating with the headphones in, talking to uh, her teammates, uh, you know, via uh, WhatsApp or Discord or, or something, or other form of communication. Um, and I think that has paid off the way that, uh, that they have raced today. Alice Barnes, uh, notably, uh, having a very good race. Yeah, we've actually got 27 riders in this front group at the moment. Uh, the next group are, well, at 1 minute 18 behind. So 27 riders in with a shout of taking out stage three of the Tour de France. This is the RGV route, the Route Grande Vitesse. A nice little play on words, of course, for the famous train that runs the length of France. Beautiful scenery. It's been a very interesting race, quite a tactical affair. We've seen those little pockets of action going for the Queen of the Mountains classification. And it looks like Shayna Paulos has gone for the Prix de la Combativité. That is the most aggressive rider award. And that is voted uh, by the public on Twitter. Thank you very much for the information there. But uh, with just under four Ks to go, we're heading into the final, the final denouement of uh, today's stage to roll in another French word for you. The French countryside for the very first time being rendered here on Zwift. It looks beautiful, but I tell you what isn't going to be beautiful, and that's the pain in these riders' legs. It looks like Kessler. Well, she appears to be on her own here. Has she been dropped from this group? Yeah, she doesn't look uh, very comfortable. Looks in a little bit of difficulty. She is uh, just off the back, so that's not good news for the uh, Tibco Silicon Valley Bank team. It is Kessler. Got, uh, She's actually, well... Sorry, Hannah, she's actually two minutes behind. She's been well dropped. So she is a two minutes adrift at the moment. Not a good position to be. So this is this nasty little section here. This uh, really does throw you in game a little bit. It's slightly disorientating. You, you've still got to, to press on the pedals, but this is a series of S-bends as we look at this wonderful shot of all of the riders. Varying styles on the, the bike, various, varying positions. Bottom right there, that is Hannah Barnes. Uh, sorry, Alice Barnes. 
Her sister, of course, rides for the same team. But Alice Barnes in that uh, British Champions jersey looking very, very good. And Alice is one of the riders, Hannah, in that front group. has got a real good punch. Yeah, she's got a very, very good sprint, hasn't she? And she can also go long. She can time trial. She can, uh, you, you know, get up the, uh, the short, punchy climbs. But also she's very, very tactically aware of what's going on. She's, you know, been riding Zwift for um, a long time. And um, if she's, you know, done a recon of this course, she'll know uh, after, the, after lap one what it's like going into the finish. But uh, she really does pack a good punch. So how she won her national title last year from a, a small group, was able to uh, use that explosive power. Looking very comfortable as well. And of course, she uh, can not only deliver a punch at the finish, she's the current British time trial champion as well. So she can do it all. She is an exceptionally gifted all-rounder. And she has the benefit of two teammates. I'm interested to see which way Canyon Tram Racing do this. We have seen in, uh, in Zwift Racing in the community the emergence of lead outs. But uh, given the size of this group, it maybe doesn't suit it. Although we do have a couple of riders in there from CCC Live. We have uh, Marcus and Latch who are going very, very well on the climbs. All about the power-ups. A couple of riders using their featherweight power-ups. A couple of riders from FDJ. Emilia Farland is in that front group. Jade Veal is there, the French road race champion. 1,900 metres to go. And the road here in virtual France on the RGV route continue to twist and turn. And remember from the last lap, they can only see the finish line with around 150 metres to go. So Hannah, crucial to get the timing right. We are going to see the sprints launched way before that finish at that last right-hand corner, aren't we? Yeah, we'll see it go quite early. And it's interesting to see that riders have already dropped their, their power up. But it's uh, very important now f uh, for riders to make sure they're in the, you know, around to the top 10 position, not too far back. A rider from uh, CCC Live just coming back on onto, into the peloton here. It's, uh, Chloe Digart, Krista Raffel up towards the front. Tacey from uh, the stage one winner from drops is up towards the front as well. But uh, as we wind through these French roads, only 1.2 kilometers to go. 1.2 k's to go, as you said, Hammer. This is the final kilometer or so of stage three of the virtual Tour de France. Stage three for the women, the leader going into this stage, riding for team at Tipco Silicon Valley Bank, Kristen Faulkner. The team has the yellow jersey. They have amassed the most points of the opening two stages. They have a couple of riders in this front group, but a team that is very, very strong numerically is Canyon Shram Racing. And they are third place on the general classification. So a lot could change in the GC today. 799 meters to go. Just looking at this beautiful French countryside rendered for the very first time here on Zwift. The speed is starting to creep up. We're around 50 kilometers an hour with 500 meters. So 600 meters to go, should I say. Riders now vying for position. Who's it going to be? The white jersey moves to the front of Krista Riffel. It looks like Riffel is going to do some sort of lead out. 400 minutes to go. This is the penultimate right-hander. Then they turn right again, heading into the finishing straight. Chloe Digart is there. Power-up's been launched. A few feather power-ups and draft power-ups been used already, which is very, very early indeed. This is the final right-hander and the yellow jersey. The Mayo Jordan opens things up. Falconer opens her sprint very, very early. Digart and Tacia there as well. This is so close. Erath moves to the front. It looks as if Tanya Erath of Germany and Canyon Tram has taken the win here on stage three. The biggest win in her virtual Zwift career without a shadow of a doubt. Perfectly timed sprint by the German, the former Zwift Academy winner, to take a well-deserved win here on stage three of the virtual Tour de France. Whoa, Hannah, what a brilliant sprint by Tanya Erath. Well, that was fantastic, wasn't it? The Zwift Academy winner just, uh, yeah, going through. the sprint opened up quite early. Just a look at the effort on uh, her face there on the left-hand side of your screen. But uh, as we get um, a little view of that, yeah, she's happy with that one. Big smiles all around from Tanya Erich that, of Germany. Do you know what? That, I mean, every anybody who wins this is, is deserves But... Uh, in particular, Tanya Erath has been so consistent, but has lacked that big win. But to the fourth, you couldn't make it up, could you? The first ever Tour de France, and she was the first ever Zwift Academy winner, winning here on stage three uh, for a team that are really dedicated uh, to this platform. 
They race on it a lot, exceptionally strong, of course, out in real life as well. But that was a marvellous victory. Perfectly timed sprint. But look who was just behind. Chloe Digart, second place at zero, a point zero eight of a second. So it was very close. And April Tace is scoring a, a lot more points as well for drops. And the first rider, I think, from uh, the leading team at the moment was in fifth, Christian Falconer. So solid performance. But there we go. The big thumbs up from Tanya Erethair. She's going to be delighted. It just shows well, as well the uh, how to use the power-ups to perfection, time them right as well, not to uh, go too early. Yeah, that was interesting. There's a lot of power-ups being used earlier on, but again, you could argue that if you use them early, you do, you, you know, you, there's the benefit of potentially opening up a little bit of a gap, especially if you're a rider that doesn't have that initial punch but can carry well um, when you've got that momentum. So riders using power-ups, um, well to sort of match their kind of abilities. But there we go, confirmation of the win today. Canyon Tramp, well, a long day in the virtual saddle today, a 106. So Chloe Dye got in second, April Tacey again, very, very consistent. Marcus in third there. The, the, uh, the wearer of the yellow jersey for Team Tipco in fifth, a good ride by Alice Barnes there in sixth position. Kuipers is there too, Hammers, Simmeling, and Vicius uh, rounds out the top 10, a second adrift. So two riders there, importantly, for Canyon Shram. And we'll get to the general classification as soon as we can. But it's all about points. 50 points for the win, one point for 25th place. Uh, I'm not even going to try and do the mathematics for you, but this is going to change things. There's a slow motion replay again, Hannah, but uh, a perfectly timed sprint because as she crossed the line, Tanya, she still had the power up use uh, in, in, in play, as it were. So she used it to its maximum, didn't she? Yeah, she really did. And she had the all-important aero power-up as well um, as a few other riders. But we saw, you know, a few of those power-ups being used way too early. And, uh, you know, it, you know, it was a, played a detriment to uh, to their performance and in the end there. But great to see Kristen Faulkner up there for Tibco Silicon Valley Bank. She was the only rider represented in that front group. So still picking up the all-important uh, points towards the yellow jersey. But uh, for Tanya Erath and the Canyon Shram team, the way they rode today... Um, at the finish, but also in the intermediates, was absolutely fantastic with uh, Alice and Tanya. That certainly was. Well, they got Alice in the top 10, as we saw sixth. And just looking a little bit further down the rankings, I think uh, Krista Riffle was 18th. So she scored points as well. So three scoring riders in the top 50. Again, I'm not even going to attempt to do any maths, any rud rather rudimentary maths. We'll wait <laughs> until we get the general classification confirmed. But it certainly is going to tighten things up at the top making for an exciting stage four. So we're now exactly at the halfway point of the women's virtual Tour de France. History being made, and history being made for Canyon Shram there, of course, as well. Their first ever stage win in the Tour. And that's going to be big. I mean, for the whole team, that's going to mean so much, isn't it, Hannah? Yeah, it is. You know, it's, it's great to have this platform to be able to continue racing as well throughout the, the lockdown. And um, the, as we, we're going to hear from Tanya, the race winner now. Tanya Arith, uh, winner of stage three of the virtual Tour de France. Uh, many, many congratulations. Summarise your emotions for me on taking a stage victory on a platform that you know maybe better than any other bike rider. Well, I'm super happy to win uh, after the last stage. Uh, yeah. I was really disappointed because I really wanted to get that green jersey and that went well. But yeah, stage win is always something special. So I thought, yes, this is kind of my thing. So I should win a stage. And uh, that it worked out now makes me super happy. I noticed uh, just before the race that you really have been doing the work on Zwift over the last few weeks. I mean, this week you already rode nearly 250 kilometers. They talk about the Zwift IQ, the knowledge of the game. How much has it helped you this week? Well, I think it's like in a normal bike, bike race as well. Like if you, it's a lot about positioning and timing. And uh, yeah, I re raced a lot on Zwift, especially in the last few months. Uh, and I could really see my knowledge in increasing and improving. So yeah, I think it's, it's a big, um, yeah. Uh, like I say, uh, yeah, uh, really good to have the knowledge um, yeah, to do well in the race. 
And finally, then, we're going to finish on the Champs-Élysées, the virtual Champs-Élysées, the first time it's ever been raced. It suits a sprinter. Having got the morale from today, you fancy the Champs-Élysées next weekend? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's a dream come true to race on the Champs-Élysées. Uh, if not in real life, then at least virtually. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that stage as well. Uh, and I'm gonna give my best to uh, go for a second stage win. Well, congratulations, Tanya Arith, winner of stage three of the virtual Tour de France. Savor this one, well done, thank you. Thank you, bye. Tanya Arith then. Great to see Tanya Erith there. A little bit emotional, I think she was, and a big smile just shows how much that does mean to her. And as I said, I think it's even more, uh, I think it's more inspiring the fact that she actually came to race for Canyon Shram because she won the Zwift Academy. That really is, it's come full circle, really, Hannah. I mean, it's something very, very special. Let's just look at how that has affected the general classification. Team Tibco Silicon Valley still at the head of affairs with 197 points. But look at the team, unsurprisingly, that has now closed that gap. Canyon Shram, 174 points behind. So only 20, so 25 points behind. Drops at 150. CCC Live now move up as well to 144. Fifth is Showair 2020 with 139. Then we have Sarah Tazet, WNT, Bowles Dolmans, Rally, FDJ, and then Sunweb rounding out the top 10. But that cluster of teams at the head of affairs there, Hannah, that's going to make, well, for a mouth-watering menu for the next few stages. I mean, it's set fair to be so, so exciting. Yeah, well, uh, Canyon Shram Racing came into this with 91 points. Uh, they now sit second with 174, so it just shows um, the points uh, that Tanya, Alice Barnes and Krista Raffel have picked up in that finish, how important it's been and uh, the detrimental effect to Team Tibco Silicon Valley Bank for uh, Kristen Faulkner. She was the only rider in that front group and uh, picked up solidarity uh, 27 points. Um, they still do lead, but uh, it's going to be very, very tight going into the uh, the next three stages. It certainly is. And I think that just shows, again, what we were talking about at the beginning of the women's race is, uh, is whether to, is the importance, if you want to go for the Mayo Jean, if you want to keep amassing points, is making sure you have as many riders in the front group. Because even on a flat course like that, where they're riding pretty much at or around threshold for a lot of the day, a flat course like that, you think, oh, the riders can sit in. It's, it's a lot harder than that, a lot harder, almost like a kind of time trial effort as we look at the points classification. Now, uh, Canyon Tram have moved into the lead in the Mayo Vale, the green jersey classification, and they have a big lead. So Canyon Tram are wearing at least one jersey tomorrow for stage four. They have 182 points ahead of Team at Tibco Silicon Valley, who have 120. Then we have drops, still ever consistent for the British squad in third place with 89 points. Then CCC Live, they're moving up there as well. They had a couple of riders um, within that front group as well. So CC, CCC Live, if I can again get my words out. What such an exciting stage and too much coffee, I think, is the order of the day. But no, a great stage. Uh, and again, tomorrow's stage, as we look ahead, is going to be, I think, a little bit different, especially with that climb towards the end. And talking of climbs, I believe this should be the Queen of the Mountains classification. And it is. And it is still Drops who have the lead with 26 points, but they're only six points clear of Sarah Tazit WNT pro cycling team. And then a bit of a drop off to third place, and it is Canyon Shram with eight. Then we have FDJ, Tibco, Dolman, uh, Bowles Dolmans, and CCC live in that seventh place with one solitary point. But there we go, some very consistent running and good to see Drops still having a jersey, especially after that win with, with, with April Tacey on stage one, Hannah. Yeah, it is. It's fantastic to see them and uh, Tacey up there again on today's stage. But we're seeing a real little battle going on between Drops and Serratis at WNT Pro Cycling. Uh, Hammers the rider up there today, picking up the points. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, we've got sort of a race within a race for uh, for that Queen of the Mountains jersey. Uh, Serratis at WNT really looking to try and take that from them. And uh, it was Hammers the rider picking up points for, for that team today. It's a, well, we move over to, uh, well, this, this is a, sorry, a hi highlight little reel. A little bit of a highlights reel of the women's event. That was the rollout from the start. Remember, this was the uh, Ruta Grand Vitesse, the RGV route. And it was a uh, fast race indeed. Always at around well over 40 kilometers an hour. We'll get up the average speed for you, I think, a little bit later on. And just look at some of the faces here, just illustrating the kind of effort. This was the final sprint. And it was, well, 
a wonderful ride by the rider from Canyon Shram there, Tanya Erath. <laughs> Big cheesy grin all round. And I wonder if she'll treat herself to a bit of cheese. Tonight. Maybe a bit of camembert. Who knows? It is the virtual Tour de France after all. Welcome, bonjour, ladies and gentlemen, to stage three of the virtual Tour de France. We've already had the women race well, just a few moments ago, and it is now the turn of the men to battle it out for the very first time in French roads on Zwift for the RGV route. This is the course that we're going to be riding on. This is the situation in the general classification. It is NTT Pro Cycling who lead they are the team who has amassed the most points in the Mayo Jeune competition with 130 points. It will be Ryan Gibbons who actually wears that jersey. He was the winner of stage one. In terms of the green jersey competition, well, NTT, very consistent. They are leading with 94 points ahead of Mitchelton Scott with 52 and CCC team in the orange with 44 points in third position. And it will be Edvald Bersenhagen. The 33-year-old powerhouse Norwegian who will be wearing the green jersey in game today. Now, the King of the Mountains classification is on the shoulders of Israel Startup Nation. And the rider who will be wearing that jersey is 22. And it's a Itamar Einhorn of Israel. So he has the prestige. He has the honor of carrying that jersey throughout uh, today's stage. As we move to the final classification in terms of, jewels, of jerseys worn. Uh, and that is the white jersey classification. So complete, almost complete and utter dominance by NTT, the South African World Tour squad. They have 17 points and they will be carrying or porting, as the French say, the white jersey. And that will be on the shoulders of another Norwegian from NTT. And that is the shoulders of Rasmus Tiller. As we roll through the teams, look at that. We have Egan Bernal, the, last, the winner of last year's Tour de France, one of the highlight riders. This field is absolutely stacked. EF Education first with classic specialist Step Van Mark. Nasser Buhani is here. The uh, the Pugliest from Arkea Samzik. Uh, Group Arm FDJ, Israel Cycling Academy, of course. Look, look out for Matthias Brandley. He's a well, the former World Hour record holder. Circus Wondra Goubert. Confidis uh, with Elia Viviani and his brother Attila. CCC and then Bahrain. NTT, of course, they're going to be in yellow, or Gibbons is going to be in yellow. Uh, Trek Sigafredo, Sunweb, and a Total Direct NLG. Then we have Team Rally. Watch out for Matteo Dalsin. And then we have BB Hotels, Vital Concept, and Astana. They are the teams that are going to be riding today. And this is the park, or this is the course that the riders face. It's known as the RGV route. It is the Route Grande Vitesse. It's essentially flat, and I think the profile there makes it look a little bit hither than it actually is, but we have a third category climb each lap at around half distance through, and then we have two intermediate sprints each lap as well. And alongside me for the virtual rider yet again is Hannah Walker. Oh, but before we do that, let's move into Radio Tour. Il y aura deux tours de circuit à parcourir pour une distance totale de 48 km concernant les coureurs représentant 23 équipes. Hello and welcome to uh, stage 3 of the virtual Tour de France. The race is currently underway, situated on the French territory. Two laps to be covered for a total distance of 48 km for the riders representing 23 teams. Well, thank you there to uh, Seb Piquet. Seb Piquet, the voice of Radio Tour. And we've already moved on. We've already had, well, we've got, as we can see, 13K is already done. So this field absolutely rocketing along. Gibbons at the head of affairs here. We're moving on to the first King of the Mountains of the day. Of course, this is the Aqueduct. Let's have a look, little look at who's going to take maximum points. But the field really shredding on this climb of the Pont du Gard. Absolutely wonderfully rendered here in the world of Zwift for the very first time. And it looks like Ryan Gibbons dominating on the front. Has he left it? Has he gone a little bit early? It looks like Krieger. Krieger goes through to, for wanted group Goubert. So Krieger takes the points there. I think we get confirmation of that. But uh, some initial action already. So Krieger from Rooch and uh, Gibbons there. They're just easing off, but uh, early action. An interesting hand that we're seeing Ryan Gibbons in the action on the King of the Mountains. I'm wondering if he's going for that classification or just making sure, Hannah, that he stays at the head of affairs and doesn't miss any uh, big splits in the field. 
yeah, it's interesting to see him uh, make that effort there. But we do have a, a group of four riders going clear now. They've got a three-second gap over uh, Marina Hoffland, Britain, and Tiller. But um, very interesting for the yellow jersey uh, to, to be now be in the breakaway. Could this be a tactic, though, that they wanted to do to try and split the peloton quite early? It certainly could. We've got a breakaway. Gibbons, Janssens, Rush, and Krieger. They've only got two seconds, and Van Dijk and Jake Stewart there. Good to see the young runner Edval Bersenhagen at the head of affairs, but the gap is coming down very, very quickly. It just didn't take long for them to neutralise that move. Straight back, as you can see, the green jersey in at the mix there. So NTT Pro Cycling of three other jerseys. Gibbons wearing yellow, Bersenhagen in green. As we look at Alexander Krieger, the German for Albus in Phoenix. Let's look at his face there. And I do like what he's done with a little mannequin. He's almost got a, um, well, a full-on cyclist. Looks a little bit like a, a kind of scarecrow in full pro kit on the right-hand side. Slightly alarming, <laughs> but, uh, but very effective. Yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? And uh, a great way to show off your sponsors in the background. But, you know, you can just see the determination and the focus on his face there can't um you know take uh, your concentration off the race for a moment it's a forever changing situation in the race and you can see the damage that that uh, king of the mountain has done to this peloton there's uh, 92 riders took to the start and there must be only around 35 to 40 riders in this group now yep it has whittled down very much like we saw in the uh, the women's race it really was uh, decimated early on so uh, this group we're down to maybe 30 or 40 riders, and there are the stats of Ryan Gibbons. Just giving you an indication. There we go. He's in a room, actually, with his teammates, which is very, very interesting. So much easier to communicate. And we can just see one of the coaches in the background there. And that uh, Arconciel, the yellow, the, uh, not the yellow jersey, the rainbow bands on the wall is for their under-23 uh, world road champion. But Ryan Gibbons making, Hannah, making, putting out just over 300 watts. Very, very easy indeed. Yeah, he's looking uh, very comfortable. Just um, out the saddle, maintaining his position in this peloton now. Able to uh, recover very quick from the effort he made on the King of the Mountains. But as you said before, you know, actually it's great that they're all together in the same room. All the teammates, they've got a coach on, uh, on hand as well to uh, give them feedback and information. So there's no worrying about uh, you know, online communication methods like WhatsApp or Discord. They can all talk to each other and see how they're faring in the race change any plans if they need to immediately as uh, we see a big attack from the uh, young british rider charlie quarterman now from oxford from uh, trek segafredo move, yeah good move it's the first year with the world tour team he is the under 23 british tt champion maybe going a little bit early the trek segafredo riders to try and uh, maybe start off provide the catalyst for a little breakaway or maybe go early for the points classification but he's been uh, overtaken by well edval burson hagen and this man knows how to lay down some power using the van draft there. That uh, gives him a little bit of extra draft or the draft benefit for 30 seconds. But the fact he's not on anybody's wheel, he's probably not using that draft the best of its benefit. But fair play to Charlie Quarterman. He's uh, reeling him back in. And if I were him, I'd be sitting on the wheels of, uh, of Edward Bersenhagen rather than uh, going straight by. But he goes by nonetheless. But uh, the bunch aren't too far behind, being led by uh, a Jonas Ruch at the moment. Gibbons is still at the head of affairs too. Kunda Court is in the mix too for Trek Sigafredo. He was one of the riders that I did my recon with the other day. He's uh, looking forward to it. And there is the, the face of Charles Quarterman with his uh, Trek Sigafredo. And a uh, nice exposed uh, brickwork there. But again, 400 watts that he's digging, having to dig very, very deep here, Hannah. Yeah, he's having to dig very deep as uh, the peloton comes all back together. But it wasn't a bad uh, rider to be in the breakaway with. Edvald Bosenhagen knows Zwift very well. I was uh, looking at his stats earlier on on the uh, Zwift Companion app. He's a level 44 and he's done 206,000 metres of uh, elevation. So yeah, we, uh, in, a lot of experience indeed, on the platform. It is indeed. Well, here's the sprint coming up. Max Walshard is very quick indeed. Gibbons, Miles Scottson's there as well. Janssen's. Oh, it looks as if it's Ryan Gibbons. It was Gibbons. They could just see his yellow jersey at the head of affairs. So Ryan Gibbons takes maximum points he'll get 10 points for the green jersey competition and clearly feeling very very good to add to the 94 points that ntt had at the start of the day again sorry to cut across you hannah the uh, the action does come thick and fast midway through the stage now we can breathe for a little bit before we head in to take the bell and head into the final lap 
but that real close concentration of effort and the way that Ryan Gibbons equipped himself up there for the King of the Mountains and also up there for the sprint says to me, Hannah, that he's in very, very good shape indeed and recovering well between those efforts. Yeah, and it shows to me that the team as a whole have come into this with a solid plan. Uh, you know, we just saw Bosenhagen off the front. It forced um, Moreno Hoffland of uh, EF Education to chase that one back. And then Gibbons was set up nicely for that sprint. So it shows to me that they're, they're all coming uh, from NTT Pro Cycling. They've all come in with a very good um, plan of, of action and how they're going to attack today's race. Uh, they do have a little bit of an opportunity now to uh, get a little bit of hydration on board, take a gel um, and, and just recover from those efforts. The, uh, they do have an, a few kilometres before we start to make any more efforts again for the next sprint. We do. There's around, estimate, well, looking at the stats at the moment, we've got around 40, 40 riders in that group. So 41 riders to be exact as we look at the slow motion replay of Gibbons taking maximum points in the Mayo Vale the green jersey competition and look at that so a couple of fist pumps on the right hand side from an extraordinary member of the virtual public there most of them jumping up and down but that particular member of the public opting for some fist pumps and there is the confirmation actually they've given it to grad that was gradic that got the points there that's the rgv ballon sprint so uh, they've given that to gradic and a uh, in second position but it did look as if it was actually the other rider who took the who took the points but uh, again we'll get that confirmed for you in just a few moments time but around say 41 riders in this league group now 19.7 kilometers underneath their virtual wheels 29 kilometers to go and when they pass through the finish they'll get the virtual belt but uh interesting there's some really good riders actually been dropped from this from this, uh, from this group in front but we're going to go to an interview very very shortly indeed uh, an interview, I think it's one of the team managers of uh, of one of the teams here. As the group just uh, backs off the pace a little bit, the first view there of Mikhail Golash, the former Polish champion riding for Team Ineos. So Ineos have got a couple of riders in that front group. It looks as if most teams are represented. Quartermain, we know, is there. And here is Ryan Gibbons. It's absolutely incredible to take part in the first ever virtual Tour de France and to pick up the first victory on stage one. Made that much more special. As a team, obviously it raised the spirits, you know, there's not much racing going on at the moment, so to get any kind of victory, whether it be a virtual or not, is, is, is something great, and we're definitely looking to build on this in the races to come. I'll be in the yellow jersey for stage three, um, and yeah, I think we're definitely going to be aiming to, to keep it all the way until the final stage. So, very, very grateful to be, to be included in this, and definitely going to be chasing success. There we go, Ryan Gibbons. He is the current South African road race champion. Very, very fast finisher indeed. Remember him a couple of years ago riding the Giro d'Italia, getting a hat full of top 10 sprints, sorry, finishes in bunch sprints, a real talent. And uh, again, really showing his worth in uh, the virtual world, taking out stage one and riding in dominant fashion so far today, but he has a very strong team. Now, if you want to look at a little bit more um, in relation to who's riding, what positions on the road, get a little bit more depth, head to Zwift.com. Just see at the bottom there, forward slash race view. I've got um, several laptops up today. And I do have Zwift.com and race view up and it is really, really handy. It gives you, you can click on any ride you want. It gives you their position uh, live. It shows where the various groups are on the road as we look at Egan Bernal there on the left-hand side. Still uh, maybe struggling just a little bit. The Tour de France winner last year. And one of the favourites, of course, for the In Real Life Tour de France, which, fingers crossed, should be happening in, uh, in around a month's time. But uh, struggling on today's course. Maybe not uh, adapting, perhaps, to the very, very fast starts that we see on Swift. Generally, they go very, very fast. And there is Egan Bernal, picture in picture. Bearing in mind, of course, he is in Colombia. You can just see his Androni Giocattoli jersey underneath the Team Sky jersey and the Mayo Jean from the Tour de France. So clearly a, uh, a big fan of the sport. He's got some, uh, well, they pictures of himself. He's clearly a fan of himself. But you know what? If I'd won the Tour de France, I'd have a few yellow jerseys in my pain cave as well. So Egan Ber uh, Bernal, it's just great to see him riding this race. It really is. And managing to raise a smile. But uh, distance today, but let's hope he just rides around and gets a bit of feel for uh, riding in the virtual world. But to have it, important that he's here, and, and, and really, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic that he's uh, racing in his virtual Tour de France. And just look how happy he is as well. Always got a smile on his face. And um, yeah, I think just having his, his presence in the racing and representing uh, Team Ineos is, uh, is brilliant. 
I think as well it's worth mentioning that some of the riders who are still down in Colombia, um, and I think that is his house, uh, but we'll be riding at altitude as well, whereas most other riders who are essentially based in Northern Europe um, will be riding at sea level, and there is a big advantage to that, of course. Um, as we head towards a, uh, another sprint, shouldn't be, well, not, no, not another sprint, sorry, we, we're looking at a slow motion replay there. There is the classification so far of uh, the Mayo Vert. So NTT, well, dominating so far with a massive 128 points in front of Mitchelton Scott with 59, and then CCC in third with 55, and Alperson Phoenix a rather distant fourth with 38. And this is the S's that we're heading into now. There's a, a series, a long series of switchbacks, no longer than 150 metres each. It's really quite disorientating when you're in game. So important that runners have done this before. Or if they haven't uh, dropped in on one of the recons, uh, this is their first opportunity to see what the approach to the finish line is like. And there we get the first glimpse of all these different riders with their various uh, pain caves, as it were. Uh, some, some interesting sights there, Hannah. Yeah, there certainly is, and uh, riders opting for, for different pain caves, some outside, some on their balconies, some indoors. Um, you know, we see Entity Pro Cycling there, obviously, uh, on a bit of a tra team training camp all together uh, doing today's race. Well, there we go. I think, uh, and it is worth mentioning as well, a couple of teams have just come off training camps. Uh, one of the teams, Bora Hansgrohe. Uh, their manager we spoke to the other day he thinks that the riders might not necessarily be in the mix they're off they just come off the back of a training camp and also uh, another big team one of the biggest teams in the world or the most successful team in the world De Kerning quick step they're actually at the Val de Fassa in the Dolomites they're actually riding this at 2,000 meters Yves Lampard, Bert van Lerberger, Stein Steelers and Ilio Kaiser as we pass under the Flamaroos so the teams in different parts of the world different parts of the season of course, focusing on the Tour de France, but a lot, a lot of riders are here. And we have an exceptional quality field in this, uh, well, the remnants of this league group. We had a big field starting out, but now it's whittled down to 41 riders in this front group. And we're now heading towards the finish line for the first time. So an important opportunity here, Hannah, for riders who haven't dropped in in any of the, uh, the recon rides to see this finish for the first time. Because as we saw in the women's race, the timing of the sprint crucial, especially with the finish coming only 150 metres after the final right-hand corner. Yeah, as in uh, real life racing, if you are doing laps, you'd always, riders will always, you know, take a look at their surroundings, you know, visualize that uh, the finish or the run into the finish, make sure they, uh, you know, remember it and take a look around them at where they think they need to open up their sprint um, from, as you said, you only get a view of the finish line as you bear to that right corner um, and it's around 150 meters to the finish line. So any rider not um, who's not done a recon uh, this week on the, the private event, um, it's very important for them to get a, a view of today. Um, and also, as you would do in real life, do your homework um, of the race. Yep, homework, crucial. As you would in, in any uh, real life race, a lot of the teams in the Tour de France will uh, obviously ride the key stages well ahead of the race. And then some of the stages that might not actually ride, they will uh, send the team car up the road with a GoPro in front of the car and actually check out the, uh, they'll go on Google Earth as well as we look at some of the stats. It looks at the rider, this is the rider workload, the top three riders over the first KOM. Krieger, 5.4 watts a kilo, Gibbons, 5.39, and Rich from EF Education first. Jonas Rich. 5.48 so some big power over the first KOM and that isn't their max that will be the average power which just puts it into a little bit of perspective but the climb not particularly hard compared to the climbs we've had on Zwift or the climbs that are to come now I am very very excited about tomorrow uh, it's essentially part of the same route but they do go over a longer climb which uh, I rode yesterday and it's actually quite tough especially coming midway through well three quarters of the way through the field it's not super steep but at two and a half k's long at five percent, I think it could uh, really split things up tomorrow. But meanwhile, the focus is of, of course, on today. And there is the yellow jersey. Callum Scottson also there. The Australian riding for Mitchelton Scott. They've got a couple of riders in this front group. And still, Hannah, we have 41 riders. But the pace has just dropped off a little bit here. Although saying that, just look at what it takes to stay in that front group. 370 watts. I could hardly keep that for about five seconds these days. Well, just look at the face on Edval Bosenhagen. Really got the uh, the bit between his teeth. Really uh, focused and uh, yeah, obviously very very pumped for today's uh, for, today, for today's stage. They've already uh, had a successful start with Ryan Gibbons. 
Boson Hager in, in a, uh, a a slight breakaway earlier on with uh, Charlie Quarterman. But just look at the effort that it does take to stay in this group. Travelling at around uh, 50 kilometres per hour. The speed's uh, not dropping for anyone. No, they are absolutely rocketing along this course. And I think they're going to finish it. They're giving... They're going to finish it in round about an hour, I think. Um, just to put it into perspective, I thought I was riding a, a quite a nice pace the other day when I did two laps with Cone de Court um, the other day. Uh, and it took me one hour and 18 minutes. So <laughs> there you go. And I thought that was a reasonable ride at 244 <laughs> watts or whatever it was. But anyway, these, of course, are the finest riders in the world. And they are here for the very first time in virtual France. This is the first time we've had the Tour de France on Zwift. And this is the first stage that we have seen a uh, virtual France rendered, and it is something pretty special. And you, of course, if you're watching this, a little bit envious, perhaps not envious uh, at the pain going through these riders' legs just to stay in the field at the moment. But if you fancy riding in this a rather wonderful world, the RGV, uh, the, Gra the, the route to Grand Vitesse, you can go on to Zwift.com forward slash events, and you can ride one of these uh, routes in, of course, Le Tap Virtuel, or use your companion app. And I do advise you to do it because it is something pretty special. As we look at Jan Backelens, a very, very classy rider indeed. He's looking pretty comfortable there for Circus 1-2 Group Goubert. Just floating at around uh, 300 watts. Again, a rider, a really punchy rider is the Belgian. He spent a couple of years with AG Tour Le Mondial. And he's had a, his fair share of injuries as well as Jan Backelens, but a very, very classy bike rider indeed. And uh, midway through the pack, that's the place to be, isn't it, Hannah? Because you get that added little bit of slipstream. Yeah, making uh, the most of that draft effect on Zwift. So it is, uh, you know, very similar uh, uh, and being made to replicate what you do in the in real life racing. Save as much energy as possible by drafting the riders in front of you. So it's almost like the the tail of the the cone of uh, the draft extends further back. So uh, the further back of the bunch you are, you are benefiting more of the draft effect. Saves around 20 to 30 percent of your energy as well. So, Backlund's a, a very experienced rider, making the most of that. He's 34 years of age now and ridden uh, five in real life Tour de France's in during his career. Yeah, he's a really likable fellow. You know, quite a, a jolly chap, but a really punchy rider. It just kind of revels on the kind of up and maybe not the high mountains, but uh, courses like Fleshwell on Liège, Bastogne on Liège, or uh, Lombardia, those sorts of races. The rider, right climbs of maybe five to seven minutes as we see Michael Matthews. Now Michael Matthews, I think he's in a set, uh, this is a little bit further down the route, but Michael Matthews there for Sunweb, just on the tops of his bars there. Again, a very, very classy rider. Not riding the Tour de France this year, a different focus for the Australian, the former winner of the green jersey in the IRL at Tour de France, of course. But Michael Matthews a little bit further down the group. Again, he'll be focusing on the Giro d'Italia this year. As we look at the positions, on the right-hand side, that is your current uh, rolling live top 10. They're moving along at 50 kilometers an hour. Retro Hollenstein is there. He's a very, very fast finisher indeed for Israel Startup Nation. Edvald Bersenhagen, Charlie Quartermain, Odd Christian Eiking. It's like uh, well, Ry Gibbons is still there. Mikhail Golash, Jake Stewart. Good to see the young Brit rider. He normally rides for the Continental team for FDJ and has been roped in to ride at World Tour level for the, uh, the virtual Tour de Zwift. So a real honor, rubbing shoulders with some of the finest riders in the world. Dal Sin is there as well. So watch out for the, the rider from, uh, from, rally, from Rally Cycling. Matteo Dal Sin is very, very fast finisher indeed. And Yves Lampard, and there's a couple of uh, De Koenig quick step riders who are out the back. But again, it is worth mentioning, they are currently midway through a very difficult training camp, riding at 2,000 meters altitude. So not necessarily beneficial in terms of putting out maximum power. No, it's not, but uh, great to see De Koenig quick step here at the virtual Tour de France, but it really is, uh, yeah, as we saw with Bernal, altitude is so much harder than riding at sea level in the, uh, in the virtual racing. So Lampel there, you know, a fine rider, just extended his contract with De Koenig quick step as we head back to the group. Camel Gradek is there. Rob Britton, he was another rider who I, uh, who's a very, very fast finisher indeed. Good climber too is Rob Britton riding for Rally Cycling in the orange jersey. Christian Canace is there 
the former German road race champion, one of the veterans at Team Ineos. He's there in that familiar Ineos kit. There's a couple of uh, Ineos riders in the mix. That's a Mikhail Golash and a Christian Kines. Charlie Quartermain, the young British rider, starting his world tour adventure at the head of affairs. Thomas Boudat is there. I'm trying to see if any of the Viviani brothers are in the mix for Kofidis. I can't quite see them at the moment. But uh, Krieger is there. Uh, Tobias Ludvigsen, the Swede, is in the mix. Uh, Duval of France and Aegis Tuala Mondial. Fred Wright, another young British rider, is in the mix for Bahrain Merida. So really interesting mix, Hannah, of riders at the front. We've got some TT specialists, some rulers, some sprinters and some climbers. So a real mixed bag up front at the moment. Yeah, and we've also got a great mix of, of the younger riders, as you just mentioned. Uh, Jake Stewart of uh, the Group Armour FDJ rides for the Conti team. He's only 20 years of age. Fred Wright, a uh, stage winner at uh, Tour L'Avenir. Um, he's only 21. And these younger riders who are also uh, very experienced on the track, um, you know, this type of racing and this course especially will suit them um, in terms of, of recovery and that, that speed you have um, and the natural speed you have when you're younger. So we get another look at uh, the face of Ed Val Bosenhagen. Very focused indeed. He certainly is focused, isn't he? He needs to be to hold in there. Again, riding at uh, 390 watts. So it's going to be interesting to see the average power of some of these riders. As uh, chatting to Kern de Court, who did a little bit of community racing on Swift the other day. Interesting that Kern de Court has invested the extra time, and he is in this front group. He's the big, powerful rider. He's normally a lead out rider, as Kern de Court. Again, another veteran of the sport. He's ridden numerous, multiple Grand Tours in his time and has really adapted well to racing on this platform. But he did a 45 minute race on Swift, an average 348 watts. Just shows the type of effort that just to stay in this group requires. Alex Kirch moves to the front, Marina Hoffland. Now, he is a very, a very fast rider. Rides for EF Education first. Spent a few years of his uh, of his career at Team Jumbo Visma. And he is a rider. If up there near the finish, Hannah, could, uh, well, could be very, very quick indeed. He is a natural sprinter. Yeah, he certainly is. And it's worth noting as well, those riders who have done a recon of this stage, who is in the front group. Yesterday when I was on my uh, recon, I was up there with uh, Jimmy Janssens of the Alperson Fenix team. So it shows by doing your homework, like like you were saying before, with the uh, Kuhn Decor also at recon this stage, um, how much of a difference it makes, as you would do in real life racing as well. Just look at Bert Jan Lindemann now from the team Jumbo Visma. Got uh, three colleagues around him. But just look at the effort it takes to uh, stay in this group. It's well, great it's to have the to support little... around him. Oh, I was just about to say that you took the words right out of my mouth. Number 11 there, Bert Yang. And it's an attack here from the Luxembourg rider, Alex Kirch. Very, very good rider. He's gone clear now. He's uh, stole a second over Lecroc. Ekval Bersenhagen and Thomas Boudat not too far behind. But Kirch, again, moved up to the World Tour ranks last year after uh, several good years with Wanty and he's a very 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 good rider indeed he's tall he's rangy and can really deliver the power as you can see there 540 watts as we head along this flatter section just by the river on the right hand side and the forest on the left but this is just heading towards the bottom of the climb again won't be long before we reach there the king of the mountains this is looking very very good for Kirsch one of the few riders to actually try and go solo a very very brave move indeed and just look at his face here Hannah yeah, a real solid position on the bike there. Putting all the uh, energy and power straight through his legs. 558 watts he's, uh, he's pushing there. So it just shows the effort it takes to actually even get off the front. He has uh, just over a two second gap. It is uh, the, the name of Jimmy Janssens who is close, trying to close the gap to uh, Alex Kirsch, the Luxembourgish rider. But uh, the speed as well that he's been able to maintain, 49 kilometers per hour, which just shows the yeah. effort, Matt. Yeah, and whether he can maintain them, I mean, he certainly won't be able to maintain 550 watts for too long. That's just way above what is expected. He's coming towards the next intermediate sprint of the day, but I think he is going to be mopped up. Now, the next sprint is, of course, the Pave sprint. Then we have the Ballon sprint, which comes after the only climb of the day, and that is the climb of the Aqueduct up the, the Pont du Gard. But after a brief tenure at the front, Rasmus Tiller moves into command. And that's one of four riders from NTT Pro Cycling in the front group. Ryan Gibbons, Max Volscheid, Rasmus Tiller and Edvald Bersenhagen. All four riders from NTT are in this front group. 
and that's very very good as we head towards the finish of this race only 14.4 k's to go but importantly we still have the two hotspot sprints the two intermediate sprints and that uh, mountains classification so there's still the possibility for a little group of riders to go clear here because it's a real short concentrated period of effort coming up Hannah isn't it yeah, and if you're able to, uh, you know, continue your effort through the, um, the the sprint point or the king of the mountains um, and split the race, as we saw earlier on that uh, Ryan Gimmons did, um, it really can put a lot of riders into difficulty, put them into the red and uh, sort of catch them off guard as well. And uh, once the, you know, a small group gets a gap, it will be hard to, to bring them back, especially if they're organized and uh, start working together. But it does show to me that NTT Pro Cycling have come here to uh, to do business with having the uh, the four riders in this front group Janssen's and uh, ever present for Alpes in Phoenix what is that another team that have got a lot of riders at the head of affairs EF Pro Cycling in that lovely pink and purple kit that I think is uh, a lot of people's <laughs> new favorite kit in the peloton they've got Sepp van Mark Sebastian Langeveld and Marina Hofland three very powerful riders uh, van Mark and Langeveld two specialists in the classics and here we come towards the pave sprint and there's somebody's jumped off the front again it is Ruch Marina Hoffland is chasing Edvard Bursen Hagen and Callum Scottson there for Mitchelton Scott but it looks like Ruch is going to be caught on the line or is he going to hold on the road just gently rounds its way around the corner and it is Edvard Bursen Hagen who goes back towards the front so so strong as the Norwegian time that sprint to perfection without the use of a power-up eases off the gas immediately Needs to control things, doesn't want to put himself too deeply into the red, but Edvald Bosen Hagen scores another set of maximum points for NTT. This really is a dominate a dominant a dominant performance by NTT here, Hannah. Yeah, very dominant, and uh, Gibbons never far behind either. But uh, Bosen Hagen just showing his experience on Zwift. He is a, uh, a level 44, but that was perfection. And as you said, not even using a, a power up, and he will hope that. Uh, Maybe it shows to me, if he hasn't used his power-up, maybe he's got the all-important aero power-up that he wants to use for the finish. He doesn't want to uh, use it for that sprint in because he might not get um, the same power-up again at the uh, the king of the mountain or the, the final sprint. Shows to me Indeed. a few tactics being thrown down. Oh, definitely. And they're certainly wanting to, well, quite clearly, just by the way they're riding at the moment, NTT have clearly gone into this race with a couple of objectives. They clearly want to dominate both classifications, uh, the, the green sprints classification and also the Mayo Jean. And there's slow motion replay of the lined out field and another set of enthusiastic spectators at the side of the road really getting behind the Tour de France as it passes through virtual France for the very, very first time. These avatars, well, they really are getting behind the race and I'd imagine now they've gone back to the bar having a pasties and maybe a cheeky cheese baguette. <laughs> Edvard Bosenhagen takes maximum points ahead of Callum Scottson with nine and Rich in a, a third position there. And Lorenzo Manzan also in the mix, kind of caught as well for Trek Sigafredo scoring at three points too. As the Pave of Village Trent is now behind us. And we are on the bottom. There we go. We're just going through the marker there. That little marker on the right-hand side. We are now onto the King of the Mountains. Not much opportunity for rest at all here, Hannah. No, there's not at all. But look at this. Gibbons in second place with that Mayo Jean on his shoulders. Just uh, overtakes Janssen's. Just shows the dominant performance from NTT Pro Cycling once again. And Rasmus Tiller in third. But uh, big late surge from Janssen's of Alpes in Phoenix. Can uh, Gibbons react to this one, Matt? Indeed. Well, Gibbons is uh, in second position. Jimmy Janssen is just going over the top. Jonas Ruch is now moving to the front. Oh, that was very, very close. It's either Krieger or Ruch. Not too sure a which uh, rider actually uh, took that one. We'll get confirmation very, very shortly. But Ryan Gibbons, I'm sure, because he, he got that bit of a gap and then gave himself some sliding space. I think he's just making sure, Hannah, rather than going for those points, just making sure he's in a position where he doesn't have to react. And also what he's, what he's doing psychologically, he's riding a little bit like the Badger, like Bernardino used to do, going for everything and actually psychologically punching the other riders in the face. I mean, that it just shows how strong his team are, but how strong he is as well. Do not mess with me, I'm the Mayo Jean. Yeah, it certainly does. And after that effort as well, it's, uh, you know, put a few seconds between riders and uh, the top 17 riders. And then there's a one second gap to uh, the 18th and, and, and going lower. But it also shows, you know, it's also 
catering for if any attacks go over the top of that king of the mountains just being prepared for any efforts just having uh, all options covered but um, it did look like it was Rutsch going uh, over the top yeah, and it's a, put a couple of riders in difficulty. There's a few riders kind of, there's a 34 riders in the front group, and then there's five seconds to a little group of 10 riders, Krieger, Godon, Van Dijk. So that effort over the top of the climb is again whittled this group down to around 30 riders. Rutsch does take the points at the aqueduct ahead of Krieger. So Rutsch for EF Education first. They have four riders in this front group. Van Mark, Rutsch, Langeveld and Moreno Hofland to EF Pro Cycling looking good, as are Ineos with three, Knees, Hater and Golash. And another team with a full complement of wider riders in the front group is NTT Pro Cycling with Gibbons, Valscheid, Tiller of Norway and Edvald Bersenhagen. As we again, we look a little bit further down the course to Igan Burnout. Still going, still riding strongly. Still a nice little session for him. And just great to see the defending Tour de France champion taking to the start line in the first ever virtual Tour de France for the first time on this virtually rendered world in France. It really is special. And a quick reminder again to any of, your, any of you who want to follow in the virtual wheel tracks, please hop on to uh, your Zwift companion app and join one of the events or go online and head to zwift.com forward slash events and uh, enter and do an attack of virtual. Of course, you can ride the stage that we previously had in uh, Watopia, or you can ride today's stage today. And once tomorrow's stage is done and dusted, you can ride tomorrow's stage as well. And then we're set fair on the final weekend of the first ever virtual Tour de France for the virtual Mont Ventoux and the virtual Champs-Élysées. I am very, very excited indeed, as is this front group of riders, because we're heading again very, very shortly towards another sprint. The road winds down, only 8.7 Ks to go. And this little group of riders the riders must be starting to suffer now because the pace has been infernal, Hannah. Yeah, the pace has never let off at all. Touching speeds of 51 kilometers per hour and it's not really dipped much under 46. So it just shows the pace um, of, of these riders. We had a, a very quick start indeed. And uh, I think they will complete the race uh, just under the hour with 8.3 kilometers left of racing to go. That is exceptionally quick. I mean, this course is 48 k's, so an average speed for approaching 47, 48 k's an hour is very, very impressive indeed. As we see your race leader, Ryan Gibbons, NTT are the team with the most points. There's 50 points on the line, and those points go towards the Maillot Jaune, towards the yellow jersey competition. The Zwift, or the virtual Tour de France, is not about time as it is in the real world. It's all about amassing as many points as you can towards the general classifications. So points towards the green jersey are on the finish line for the first 10 and then an intermediate sprint throughout the stage. The same for the king and queen of the mountains. Points are amassed on the, uh, the climbs throughout the day. And then, of course, we have points towards the yellow jersey. 50 points for the winner down to one point for 25th place. So the more riders you get towards the sharp end of the race, the more points you will amass. And those points then rolled over to the next stage and the team that consistently has the most points will then designate a rider and uh, let them wear the Mayo Jaune in game. And it is Ryan Gibbons who has that honor today as we head towards the next sprint, the final intermediate sprint of the day. They're winding things up. Moreno Hoffland for EF Education first. Kirsch Duval now goes clear. So Duval is in the lead at the moment. Fred Wright for Bahrain Marina, the young British rider. A year number two on Bahrain for him, but he's been overtaken out by Edval Bernsenhag and Duval is still there. So Duval and Larry Ward base now from Asia to Ala Mundial. But it is Rutsch again, Jonas Rutsch, the German rider for EF Education first. Is he going to hold on? It's very, very close. It looks like Rutsch, Gradic. Ooh, very, very close on the line. It looks like it might actually be Nicholas Mays who took the victory there. We'll get confirmation soon. Well, was it Janssens? But uh, the pace really did spike up for that sprint. A few riders there dropping a few power-ups. But now with 6.7 Ks to go, it's about regrouping, isn't it? Making sure they continue to communicate, Hannah, and plan for the finish. Yes, yeah, certainly those teams who have uh, multiple riders in this group communicate with each other, try and get a little bit of a recovery, hydrate yourself and start thinking about the finish. Now, where can you save energy? Do you know the course? Uh, and also remembering where that uh, Fun Rouge comes and uh, the, the turn into the finish. Um, 
But that sprint shows to me as well. I mean, although it was a very, very fast pace, it wasn't hotly contested. Are a few riders no. now starting to think, actually, they want to go for the stage victory today on stage three on the RGV course? Gibbons ever present towards the front. But, um, yeah, how much uh, uh, energy has uh, he spent during the race in the intermediate sprints and the, the king of the mountains? That is a big question. And there is Nicholas Mace just towards the back of that group in the ideal position there for the slipstreaming. He explained it very, very well earlier on. It is easier to sit on the wheel of another rider, but to just towards the back of the group, although in terms of position, it's maybe not the best because you can't always react to things that go in terms of obtaining the, mo the most uh, draft and the most slipstream. It's just towards the middle of the, the middle towards the back. So when Nicholas Mays is at the right moment uh, at the moment now is ideal in terms of benefiting from the draft of the riders in front. And he's still hovering at around 300 watts, so not much of an opportunity to, to recover after that sprint for the points classification. But I'm just going to run through a couple of the riders that are in the front. If you, and if also, if you head over to Zwift.com forward slash race view, you can get all of the detail about the riders, wherever they are, where are they they're on the course, the individual stats of the riders, the speed, the power they're putting out. But we have three riders um, at, in the front from Team Ineos, Kneis, Hater, and Golash. One rider from Jumbo Visma in the form of Bert Jan Lindemann. Four riders from EF Education first as we see confirmation of the balance sprint, the last intermediate sprint of the day. Mays from Scotson, Jansen Thruch, and Dalsin was there. Gibbons in sixth, Gradic, Boasen Hagen, and Larry Warbass, the former American road champion raging, uh, racing for AG Tua Le Mondial. We've got four from EF, Van Mark, Ruch, Langevoort and Hofland. Two from Arkea Samzik, Thomas Buda and Anthony Delaplace. We've got Larry Warbass and Julian Duval from AG Tour Le Mondial in the, the brown, white and uh, and blue. The rather divisive kit, if you don't mind me saying so. Alpes and Phoenix have two riders in the dark navy, Alexander Krieger and Jimmy Janssens. Jake Stewart is there for Group Armour in the white. Uh, Retro Hollenstein from Israel Startup Nation, Nicholas Mays of Lotto Sudal in the red and black. And we have an attack, Charlie Quartermain. Excuse me, Hannah, Charlie Quartermain. He's very aggressive today, Hannah. He punts off the front with four and a half Ks to go. Yeah, this is uh, a long a long way to go for uh, Quartermain, four and a half kilometers. He feels confident that he can do it. He's opened a one second gap to uh, Gradek, who's in third. He's got uh, Christian Knees coming over from Team Ineos for company. He's the under-23 British time trial champion. But look at this effort from uh, CCC's Kamil Gradek, the Polish rider, straight over the top. But uh, looks like it's Bora Hansgrohe up towards the front, closing this one down. Well, that was a good move there. And perhaps that was a little move just to Charlie Quartermain, maybe just to test the water. He's got another teammate in the group with him, Kern de Court, the very experienced rider. But that little move off the front from Quartermain is just drifting back down the group. You can just see his name tag uh, just uh, ahead of his avatar there. He's got to make sure that he stays in those wheels. This is going to be exceptionally hard because they're still rolling along at 45.1 kilometers an hour as a few little thumbs up drop down, a few ride ons there. And there is the face of Quartermain right on cue. Absolutely on the limit at the moment. 420 watts down to 340. 84 uh, RPM revolution per minute. We're not showing his heart rate, but Hannah, I'd imagine that is going to be through the roof as we head in with three and a half Ks to go. Well, just look at how much that effort has taken out of him. And he's having to maintain 56 kilometers per hour as well. So after that effort, trying to keep himself in this reduced bunch, if he can just stay in this position midway in the peloton, he can uh, make use of all the drafting benefits with 3.2 kilometers to go. But uh, great to see the rider from Ineos is up towards the front as well. Hoffman from uh, EF Education as well. well. This is a very, very interesting. Let's have a look at this again. You just see Charlie Quartermain just drifting back down the group after that attack. Just shows the sort of effort. Now we're just heading in now, just under three kilometers to go of this stage three of the first ever. Making history here we are with the virtual Tour de France. Stage three, the first time we're on the virtual roads of France. We are on the RGV route, the route Grande Vitesse, and they certainly have turned out a Grande Vitesse today. The speeds have been exceptionally high. It looks as if the men are going to just go under the hour for 48 kilometers. This has been a brutally hard stage. It's not in relation to the elevation, not much elevation at all, only 266 metres, but fast and furious as we look at the pain face of Ed Val and Hagen churning out Hannah 500 watts, and there's still 2.3 to go. 
Yeah, this is exceptional. Bosenhagen has three in real life Tour de France victories to his name. He wants to try and add one of the virtual Tour de France victories as well. They've had a strong showing so far from NTT Pro Cycling, but it looks like it's Ryan Gibbons on the front. But Edvel Bosenhagen just in his wheel, so it's a little bit of a form of a lead out going on. Yeah, a little bit of a lead out for sure, but he's got, uh, unsurprisingly, Edval Bosenhagen has won the Prix de la Combativité with the most aggressive rider awarded. He's still near the front there in that green jersey. Watch out for Ryan Gibbons, not too far behind. And if you notice, Ryan Gibbons is hovering on the wheel of Edval Bosenhagen, making sure he doesn't break into the wind at the front. 1,800 metres to go. Alex Kirch moves to the front for Trek Stiegafredo. Sebastian Langeveld now goes on the left-hand side. Langeveld is going long. Sebastian Langeveld has three teammates in there for EF Pro cycling he has Rutsch van Mark and Moreno Hofland a good little move but it's immediately brought to heel a very aggressive here 1.4 to go Hannah yeah, Rasmus Tiller, the rider with the uh, polka dot jersey on his shoulders Fred Wright the young rider from Bahrain McLaren to the fore stage of uh, Tour Lavignere to his name last year but uh, the riders from NTT Pro Cycling never far from the front but where's the uh, sprint going to start to open up? 1.1 kilometres remaining of this 48 kilometre race. But it is Callum Scottson and our move to the front. Chicken out six watts a kilo. This is an infernal pace. Riders dropping power ups left, right, and centre. One kilometre to go. The Flam Rouge has been passed. Burson Hagen, look at this. Absolutely laying down as much power as he can. Ryan Gibbons still holding on, looking pretty comfortable, if you ask me, at 400 watts. But Edvard Burson Hagen trying to get himself into pole position now. 700 metres to go. Coming into the final now, stage three, the RGV route. Four runs from Pro Cycling, three from Ineos, four from NTT. But the big question is who's going to take out the win? Boris and Hagen dropping a draft now with 500 metres to go. Alex Kurs moves to the front. The, the, uh, the Luxembourg rider for Trek Sigafredo, he can really put out some big power. Ryan Gibbons not too far away as well. Gibbons coming into the right-hand bend. In third position, it is Rasmus Tillet in the white jersey. But Gibbons opens things up with 200 to go. Gibbons goes long. He drops a power up. Going to court there too. To corner Callum Scottson. Callum Scottson in the front. It looks like Jake Stewart has just crossed the line in first place. We'll get confirmation of that. So, so tight at the end. So difficult to call. It might have been Matteo Dalsin as well. What an absolutely breathtaking finale. Ryan is leaving it very, very late, and that is down to a real photo here on the finish, Hannah. Yeah, that was so, so close on the finish. Constant uh, changing of the guard in, in terms of who was in the lead there. Bosenhagen really put out a big effort and uh, started his effort really early, uh, in, in my opinion. But uh, was setting up Ryan Gibbons very, very well. A great late charge from uh, the young rider, Jake Stewart, who rides for the Conti team of uh, uh, Group R. Group Armour FDJ, but uh, wait to get confirmation of whether it was Matteo Del Sin from a rally taking the victory. We think that it is Matteo Del Sin of a rally that has taken the win there, but it was so, so close. We'll get confirmation. We think it was 100th of a second. Absolutely amazing. That's just, uh, we'll get confirmation of that soon, but that was a blanket finish. Now, I think uh, NTT perhaps perhaps open things up a little bit too early but there is confirmation of the winner Matteo Dalsin of Rally Cycling takes the win for the Pro Continental American team absolutely fantastic stuff and there he is wattage beluga <laughs> he's got written on his <laughs> toolkit there well that certainly was he dropped something absolutely amazing there at the finish but what a sensational victory that was all about timing a couple of other riders quite clearly just opened things up a little bit too early but Delsin timed it perfectly Hannah yeah he certainly did and as we mentioned before for the women's team that uh, rally cycling have had the expertise of Holden Komu uh, for this uh, set of racing as we can see here Matt the confirmation it is indeed. Uh, Matteo Delson takes it from Jake Stewart, from Callum Scottson. So Canada and the American team take the win. A well-deserved victory there. A little bit of a surprise, but a great ride by Jake Stewart. He'll be very, very pleased with that, of course, moving up to riding at World Tour level. Callum Scottson in third, and another young British rider for Team Ineos, Ethan Hayter there in fourth position. My, that was a, such an exciting finish. And here it is again. Oh, so, so close on the line. 
And it is worth saying, actually, uh, in relation to what we actually see in game. Now, the Zwift server, so the data that we get in terms of the riders crossing the line, that in relation to the finishing positions is the real truth of it um, and accurate to the millisecond. But one, when it comes, Hannah, the, to races that are just uh, won or lost by a hundredth of a second, what you actually see visually can sometimes be slightly different. So it may look as if from the shots we get that one rider crosses the line in front, but it actually in terms of the time, um, it is actually correct. So it might look, that would look very, very close indeed between Jake uh, Stewart and Matteo, Matteo Del Sin. Um, and it was because it was one hundredth of a second. Yeah, well, you know, all about that timing and the patience, dropping your uh, power ups at the right time as well. But 0.01 hundredths of a second. I mean, it's so so close and i think this is why it's so exciting as well after 48 kilometers it comes down to the wire quite literally it certainly did well there is uh, edvard bosenhagen he won the the prize for the most aggressive rider and he was at or near the head of affairs sprinting for the intermediate time bonuses and i think when we look at the green jersey competition i think uh, they're going to be safely in the lead team ntt remember they had four riders in the front group but once we look at the top 10 and we look at the accumulated points we'll get a, uh, a bit more of a clearer picture in relation to who's leading the general classification. But I think well, we've got Ryan Gibbons up there in fifth place for NTT and uh, Rasmus Tillett in sixth. So it looks as if NTT had, uh, well, they did have two riders in the top 10. So in terms of retaining the yellow jersey, Hannah, NTT uh, still look very, very strong indeed, don't they? Yeah, they certainly do. And Bosenhagen just a little bit further down in 20 seconds. So paid for his efforts of going early. Uh, it didn't quite uh, you know, pay off for him in the end and dropping that aero power up. Um, but it's all about those vital points towards the general classification. And it does look like they'll cement themselves in that jersey, as well as picking up more points in the green jersey as well throughout the race. Indeed. Well, as we mentioned before, uh, they did have four riders in the top in that front group. They had Max Valscheid himself, an exceptionally fast sprinter, clearly suited to this sort of terrain, essentially flat terrain. He finished inside the top 25. He was 19th. So again, the, t the team the team scored. That's what you need to do in relation to, to scoring points and accumulating points towards the Mayo Jeune. You need to make sure you get as many riders as you can in a scoring position within the top 25. And NTT put all four of their team in the top 25 and they made the race exciting as well didn't they Hannah they were they were protagonists but also they rode very shrewdly and very very smart as well yeah they certainly did and I, I also don't know if it actually pays dividends to be because they're all in the same room you can see them all they're obviously on a bit of a, uh, a training camp together here and uh, obviously you know that that way of communicating and, and being together in real life as well paid off for them all um, of course you know very experienced on Zwift anyway but um, I think being able to see each other and know how each other are feeling um, uh, and getting that, that sense um, from each other has p paid off and having a good support staff around them too. Oh, definitely. I think they, and you can clearly see by the way they rode in game as a really valid, a really good point there, Hannah. The fact that they're, they've got direct communication between themselves, rider to rider, which you don't often, go, uh, often get unless, yeah. of course, you're all in the same room. But as we know, many of the teams here um, are sort of halfway through training camps as they focus on the Tour de France. I know that Ed Valbos and Hagen uh, is in line with riding the Tour, as is Ryan Gibbons as well. So he's looking forward to riding his first ever Tour de France. Um, but he was, uh, he, I know, I was speaking to him the other day and he said that he's never been so nervous before before an event. And he's on this training camp and he said that everybody's given him, given him a little bit more time off from training to make sure he's fully focused for this race. But <laughs> the, the, res, the result of that is that he's even more nervous than ever. He said he's never been so nervous as, as on a, in a bike race. As, as is this but we should be getting a uh, an interview in a few moments time with our race winner Matteo Dalsin of Canada from a rally and that was a superb ride we did highlight him earlier in the show as we just look at the uh, beautiful viaduct here based upon the Pont du Gard in France and the whole of the virtual world that you'll see today and tomorrow is inspired by France as we look at the uh, Matteo Dalsin's I don't know, it's a combination of a, um, a man cave, uh, a pain cave, uh, a spare room. Mateo, uh, Mateo congratulations on uh, winning Zoom stage three of the virtual no. Tour de France. Hopefully we'll get him on the camera. Mateo, can Hi, you Mateo. hear us this afternoon? Uh, I can go, oh, oh, my Zoom. Wait, he doesn't seem to be able to hear us at the moment. Okay, I'm good. Oh, great. Thanks. 
So we'll see if Matteo can hear us. Matteo, can you hear us? Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Matteo, you're on the uh, phone. Great, Obviously, everyone second. wants to call you. We're trying to get ASO's attention. So it's going to be ASO first, Matteo, and then it's going to be um, Greg Henderson there for those both podcasts. So, Matteo, let's uh, talk right to us you? now, uh, Matteo. Yeah, yeah. Matteo, Perfect. congratulations. Perfect, thanks. I'm just going to get Matteo ASO's on attention. stage three, the win of uh, the virtual Tour de France. Matteo, you're live now this afternoon. Uh, congratulations on winning stage three of the virtual Tour de France. Can you talk us through that victory? Matteo, you're live with us now. Can you hear us? I don't know if he can hear us this afternoon. Matteo, can you hear us this afternoon? I don't hear him. We'll wait and see if he can, uh, he can hear us. There he is. He's adjusting the camera for us. Matteo, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. There he is. Matteo, congratulations. We've been watching you doing your shoes up and everything else uh, after that race. Congratulations on winning stage three of the virtual Tour de France. Uh, talk us through that run in. Uh, it looked like you used a power up in the last few hundred meters. Talk us through the last few hundred meters of that stage. Yeah, we got some tips from. Uh the Saris indoor specialist team that uh, is out of the States. And they said like through that twisty section, the draft kind of like came and went. So I was just trying to stay up front and then wait until like two, 300 to go to use the power up. Cause I think that's about like what he said it would last for. And then, uh, yeah, just sprinted uh, with everything I had until the end and looked up and saw the little finish screen and said that I was in first. So that was super cool. Your team take this racing very, very seriously, don't you? Uh, but you've beaten this afternoon some huge names. Edvold Bosenhagen was in that sprint. Ryan Gibbons was in that sprint. What does it mean to you as a rider in a wild card team to win a stage? Yeah, I mean, I'm beyond stoked. Uh, our team set us up with, like, an incredible setup from Wahoo. So, yeah, we definitely uh, pulled out all the stops as far as... Uh, the computer and equipment setup went to try and uh, give us uh, okay, a fighting right, chance. Uh, uh, sorry, just got <laughs> some noise there. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm beyond thrilled with uh, being able to pull out a result for the team. And the final question then, uh, we hear you've got a secret weapon in the team in Holden Como, who is a Zwift pro racer. How much uh, influence has he had on the team on winning today? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's been, like, an invaluable resource. Uh, we were all, like, pretty new to the, the Zwift platform. I mean, myself and a couple of the other Canadians who live up in the snow uh, had dabbled in it in the wintertime. But, uh, yeah, he basically has uh, talked us through all the tips and tricks that he's learned. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think that we would uh, – in with a fighting chance without him. Well, many congratulations, Matteo, stage winner of the Virtual Tour de France, riding for Team Rally. Congratulations and very well done. Cheers. Thanks so much. Oh, that was very, very interesting, Hannah, wasn't it? I mean, the uh, the kind of knowledge that he got from Holden Comu. I mean, clearly you've got to back it up with the legs. I mean, the rider, Matteo, he is a former Canadian national road champion, he's really got the legs, but that extra little bit of knowledge in relation to using his power up was seemed was quite crucial, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And also knowing uh, when to start your effort, when to start the sprint. Um, you know, obviously the, the information and the tactics uh, given from Holden Komu has played dividends. Um, as we can see the classification results, Matt. Indeed. Well, that uh, that ride, or well, that consistent ride by NTT means they're still a bit ahead of affairs, but the gap has come down. They've got 193 points. They'll be in yellow tomorrow in stage four, ahead of Rally Pro Cycling uh, with 156. But look at Trek Sega Fredo. They're two riders in the top 10. They now move into the mix as well in third position. So this is really, really hotting up. There's no real team way ahead. A lot of the teams are now coming in into the fray, but the green jersey classification we know is still going to be dominated by NTT. And that should uh, roll across in just a few seconds time. And there we go. Confirmation that NTT still way out in front with 161 points. Uh, 85 points for Mitchelton Scott in second and then CCC in third with 65. Then we have Alpes and Phoenix with 53. And there we go. So NTT will be in yellow. 
and they will be in green as we head into stage four, still in France, of course. Another world to look at, or a similar world to today for tomorrow's stage, but with a little bit of a sting in the tail, we have a nasty little climb. But there we go. Very consistent riding by NTT across the board. Burson Hagen active, and he was the rider that was given the, be the best, or well, the most aggressive rider, or the uh, award for the plus combatif, as the French would say. And uh, next up, is the polka dot a jersey and lead it well, into uh, into the stage it was the israel startup nation who wore that jersey i think there might be a few changes today oh they still have it oh one solitary point so great news for the israel startup nation they have 17 points but only one point in it ahead of alpes and phoenix with 16 and then ef pro cycling in third place in the kom with 10. so all of the classifications pretty tight and a lot still before we wrap up Hamlet, a lot still could change okay yeah it's very right close then. at the top of some of those classifications isn't it and uh, at the halfway point it's all to play for still it certainly is well we've had a thrilling stage three i'm exhausted but tomorrow we line up again for stage four it is the caspat we have 46 and or 45.8 kilometers of rolling terrain. A lot of the terrain that we saw today will be back on the menu again, but they deviate left towards the back end of the course and take in a nasty a little bit of a climb. As we look at uh, what happened today, we had all of the riders on the start. It was aggressive racing as we look, took in the sights, the sounds, and even the smells of France, Mont de Chamuisel. A look inside some pain caves, some fueling strategies. Look at the face of Charlie Quartermain. Every single rider giving it their all today. Ed Val and Hagen, the most combative rider. It was a superb stage, but we're only halfway. It's so far, it's been an absolutely magnificent virtual tour de France. So make sure you join me and Hannah Walker tomorrow. Same time, 1400 BST. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Right on.